I am Sam. And I'm Adam. And today, on this day of all days, we're going to be battling it out, duking it out. It's Thunderdome Day. To, Whee! to see what consists um, PM Metal Guide's top 40 albums of 2020. It's going to be a long one, folks. Uh, strap in, because we're going to be here for a while. I assume if you're starting this episode, you already know how long it is. Um, so bless you for even attempting. I think this took us like three hours last year and we didn't record it, so this should be fun. We didn't record it and we had less to talk about because we only did 25 last year. So this year... I feel like the bottom 15 is not going to be too bad, though. No, I think it'll probably be a, a number of compromises. The top, the top, The top 25 will be pretty... Hard to pretty parse. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty difficult to parse through, but we'll get through it. Yeah, I, I know. Adam really just wants to include the new uh, gosh, what's a what's a popular artist? I don't know. The new AC. <laughs> Adam DC. really just wants to include the new Ariana Grande album in our top ten. I have to keep on telling him no. Um, look, I'm just saying, man. The song with Doja Cat's good. Um, <laughs> but before we dive into that horrible, awful topic. Um, of the day what you've been listening to this week sam aside from preparing for this anything yeah um, i mean i feel like that was most of my week yeah. but aside from that um we're gonna talk about the greg Puciato album so i'm not gonna shit on it because i don't like that album um i've been listening to ajj's album knife man which is their 2011 album i think it's their fourth album it, mm-hmm. it's two ones after um people who eat people Mm-hmm. And it's pretty good. It definitely sees them showcasing a more guitar influenced, uh, like punk sound, I guess, mm-hmm. in their typical folk punk. And it's it's really good. AJJ slaps, and the song, the album has some really quirky indie bangers that uh, I don't know. It's it's good. Yeah. If you like AJJ and like that sort of punk, punk, you'll definitely like it. I think it's a classic and on you. No, yeah. there you go. Um, well. As for me, um, similarly in that vein, uh, I've well, I've been I've been ripping a lot more Doma this week. Um, <laughs> also, jump back uh, after we listened to the Money Store together. I re-listened to it on my own. Great record, of course. Really, uh, the Money Store is a good record. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Um, and then the other big one that I want to talk about is. We talked about this, I don't know when we talked about this, um, but there was that, The Reticent, um, which is a oh, yeah. one, one man prog metal group. And I gotta say, I was impressed, but not blown away. It's a, it's a very healthy mix between Dream Theater, Haken, and Soen, all things that I, at least to some aspect, enjoy. Um, so if you can take the Dream Theater cheese of, like, the spoken <laughs> word concept and, like, shitty lyrics, right, um, <laughs> with Haken instrumentation, sewing vocals, and screams, it gets pretty heavy, um, but overall, a pretty enjoyable record, uh, the Oubliette is. It's over an hour. Does it um, tickle that prog fancy? I would say it tickles the fancy. Not better than some other ones that we'll be talking about later. But um, definitely um, a good and digestible enough prog album that I enjoyed. I would listen to it again. Gotcha. I listened to it twice this week. So, I mean, yeah. No, no, uh, I'll probably good. check it out. I mean, for the next, like, December's always slow. And then the first week of January, literally no music comes see, out. Okay, but so, all right. This is a, sorry. This is another topic that I kind of wanted to talk about. I don't think this December is this slow, dude. We have, we have Death Heaven Live album. Okay. Yep. We got Poppy Christmas album. <laughs> okay. Yep. Actually, that came out today. Um, We have Boris and Merzbau collab coming out in a few days yep they just dropped a cover of boris by mm-hmm. the melvins mm-hmm. um obviously we have the black stallion remix album i mean none of these are like albums though they're all remixes all right well there's a bunch they're of like other good underground black, black metal albums, albums. okay um, i believe you it wouldn't it wouldn't be december if like some 
black metal group with 500 listens on Spotify dropped an opus on the 30th. And Blackwing comes out this month, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Look, okay, well, December. You know that, that's for the end of the topic. All right, remember. That's for the end remember of the when fucking Dark Wolf and Light came out at the end of last year, and we were all like, "Bro, this Fen album's really good. It should have probably been on the list." And then it wasn't on the list, and it didn't get any love. We're here for you, Fen. <laughs> that album's really good. Yeah, it definitely is better really, than Winter. <laughs> definitely better than Winter. I agree. Um, but yeah, December good. Well, you know what, Adam? To check out this light. awesome pivot. Not Dark Wolf. Tell this awesome pivot. Don't let me bring you down because I, I listened to the yeah. Deer Hunters live album, which I think was recorded in like 2013 on the Migrant Tour mm-hmm. with a with a four piece orchestra. Right. Okay. I guess a quartet, string quartet. Sure. And uh, it's an interesting listen. I've seen the dr- the Dream Hunter. Jesus. I've the seen Dream the Deer Hunter, Hunter. live twice, mm-hmm. and uh, this album. I wouldn't really say showcases like what they actually sound like. It's kind of a weird <laughs> recording. Like all the t- all the tunes have um like improv sessions in between them and like different intros. Mm-hmm. And you know, with the Deer Hunters recorded music, they have a million and one like orchestrated parts that they just can't replicate. So right. oftentimes the guitars will cover various things. Mm-hmm. And uh I don't know, it's just a weird recording. Like it's super enjoyable and it's a pretty good track list. But they definitely uh switch up some of the tracks like they turned things that hide away into a rock song they turned the procession into like a prog jam with like a two minute keyboard solo gotcha um and then they turned progress into an eight minute long just jam session so and it's also just a really weird set like Mm -hmm. it's mostly migrant tunes but it also has like random tunes like it has Re- where the road parts and the procession from act two of all the songs hmm. it has home and things that highway from the color spectrum and it, it, i don't know it's just a weird live album like i really get the sense that they had one more an- another album contract with third man in case <laughs> he just wanted to break away and so he was like oh i don't know just record a live album oh, yeah. get him off our backs yeah but uh it, it's like if you like the deer hunter you'll like this it's cool yeah you, uh, you should check it out. I, I listened to it while driving ah. with my mom, and she was like, "This music's very aggressive." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's it's real. It's really. It's kind of surreal. It's very very different. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. What else? What else you got? I've been digging the new Wake EP that came out a little while ago. Pretty good yeah oh my god i listened to it yesterday and i was, I was like wait wait dropped a new ep yeah. and i heard it and oh man it really is just phenomenal yeah they definitely know what they're doing mm-hmm. i'll need to give it a few more spins but yeah uh, definitely a great band operating at the top of their power level uh-huh um i mean i don't know if this is going to be a seamless transition but well, I have a couple. I have a couple more albums I'd like to All talk right, about before you talk about Glorious Depravity. All right, well then talk about it. Uh, I listened to Playboy Cardi's Die Lit. Okay. Yes. And well, <laughs> the reason being, a lot of people that like hyper pop or like Hundred Gex mm-hmm. and Dorian Electra and all those artists also go bananas for Playboy Cardi because he has this just very like simple in your face like rap style where he'll just repeat a hook for like four minutes. Yeah. And a lot of critics absolutely love him, so I really thought I'd actually enjoy this album. Mm-hmm. And uh, spoiler alert: I definitely d- did not. <laughs> yeah, um, I like, think it's okay. No, like I guarantee, like if I listen to this album enough, I, it'd be a ton of fun. I just, I don't know, it's a little too poppy for me, if that makes sense. Sure. It's not like out there enough. It really just seems like a well-executed, like, modern pop trap album mm-hmm. with, like, more simplistic hooks than usual. Yeah. That's not bad, though. And I guarantee, like, if if I spun it more, I'd probably enjoy it. There's supposed to be a new Playboy Cardi uh, project out this year, I think. Right? Yeah, no, I've been seeing a bunch of people posting on 4chan about it, so... Interesting. Playboy Cardi ha- is a huge meme, though, like, when it comes to, like, release schedules and stuff. He's famously, like, late to stuff. Interesting. 
He, w- yeah. he was uh, supposed to, to play my school last year, and he showed up like three hours late and played for like 15 minutes. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but uh, aside from that, the only other album I'll mention before we can make your seamless transition uh-huh. is Between the Very Me's Coma Ecliptic. I know I mentioned it last week, but oh my god, I love that album. I listened to it today while driving, and I was just reminded how fun it is, how well executed it is, how great it sounds. Probably Tommy Giles' best um, vocal performance. Up there with Slumber Party, if you will. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Like, Comic Cliptic, underrated. It's really good. Adam should listen to it more, and once January hits, we're definitely doing a podcast on it. I am excited for that. <laughs> Adam, you've listened to it like twice, dude. Come on. I know, I know. Um, all right. The other and final album that we've both been grinding this week because it just came out is the new one from New York death metal band Glorious Depravity. Their debut. Um, and it's a super group comprising of uh, members of Peron uh, and Woe. And a bunch of other death metal bands. Um, no, let me go on the metal arm just so we got, I can double we check got, all the. We got the Clean Teeth bassist, which are a, actually a, a doom metal band. Okay. Um, we have the Woe drummer uh, and the Woe guitarist. We have another guitarist from Mutilation Rights and Hexer. Uh, and of course, Doug Moore uh, vocals from Peron. Sepatus and Weeping Source. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a, it's pretty good. This album's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's really good. Ageless Violence came out last week. Uh, came out. Right? Yeah, Friday. Yeah, last Friday. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's like, I don't want to say it's perfect modern OSDM, but it's pretty damn close. Yeah, it's definitely a little more technical, a little more brutal than the mm. 90s Florida stuff, but it, it pays some clear homage to it, and it's just executed amazingly well. Like, this is the album that, like, this is what death metal should sound like to people that like death metal. Yeah, I agree. Like, I I don't, I don't want to rip on any other death metal band, but, like, I really, like, this is probably my favorite death metal album of the year so far. Just because, <laughs> just just purely on the vein that um, I, I don't know it's it's got everything it's aggressive it's produced extremely well. Um, I think I, Colin Marston produced it. I've, I know all like the hook. I even know some of the hooks on this record. Like I know some of the guitar leads. Like I don't know. I just feel like this record does everything right for death metal purposes. I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, and spoiler alert, it's probably going to be in our top 40 it's somewhere. It's probably going to be on the top 40 somewhere, and we're going to figure that out, like, right now. All, All right. right, drum roll. I don't think the mics can pick up my the drum. I'm I heard rolling, it. But... I heard it. I heard the drum roll. Um, All right, cool, cool. All right, Adam, so how are we doing this? Well... I guess we can start at the the top and work our way down. All right, I'm just going to I'm just going to write in the album that deserves to be there. All right, let's let's start with let's let's write in both of our top 10s and let's explain what they are and um in no particular order cuz we're not trying to we're not trying we're not trying to do that here yet. Um so let's write in our top 10s and then that will I guess direct us to where we need to go. Sounds uh, good. Eh. In the meantime, but, uh, um, I guess we can start progressively going through um, and telling each one which is which. So, within my top ten, um, or within actually both of our top tens, we have <laughs> we have we have Ulcerate, the new Ulcerate album, Stare Into Death and Be Still. We have uh, involved by Pesach Giver. Uh, we also both have the Mare Cognitum and Spectral Lore collaborative album, uh, Wanderer's Astrology of the Nine. We both have um, Aranzi Pazuzu's Mistar and Kinsey. 
We both have Haken's Virus. We both have um, Vile Creatures. Glory, glory. Glory, Apathy glory. Apathy Helm. took Helm. Thank God, by the way. Yeah, that album's a freaking amazing. Um, and then I think the last one that is a perfect match is uh, Couch Slut. Couch Slut? Yeah. yeah. Take a chance on Rock and Roll. I didn't actually get a chance to write most of those down because I was saying that. But that's okay. All right. I will and, do it uh, now. Yeah, so let's look at the discrepancies first, I guess. Sure. So what 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 else is in your top 10 that is not in my top 10 so i have at the very top of my personal top 10 palimpsest by protest the hero to the surprise of absolutely no one uh-huh yeah i also have the microphones microphones in 2020 and finally imperial triumphant alphaville and I will fight. Personally, I think all three of those albums deserve to be in the top ten. I will fight to the death for them. Okay. And as for Alphaville. me, as for me, I have uh, discrepancies on my list include um, Cathedos by Serpent Column. Um, we have Come and See by Mama Leek. When I Die, Will I Get Better by Svalbard. Adam, are you okay, dude? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? <laughs> well, you said when oh, I die, will oh, I get better? <laughs> that was horrible. That was <laughs> that was bad. Um, yeah, that was a really bad joke. And I think that's it. You named only three, right? Yeah. I'm but don't you also have the uh, Kataria th in there? That's my number 11. Oh, that is your number 11. God, I'm, I'm sorry. The top 40 format and Topster is kind of weird. It is. I'm trying to go through, and I think I missed something on the sheet, but I'm... I, I, I might be even crazy. Oh, I did. There we go. There we go. All right. So. I don't know. Why did you delete that? I didn't delete it. Sam is deleting stuff on our spreadsheet. So. I think you just have bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> that might be true as well. All right. Where do we want to begin? All right. I mean, let's just, let's just, let's just fight it out right now for the top three. All okay. right, so we know for a fact Ulcerate's in there. Yeah. Like, Stare Into Death and Be Still is just the best album of the year. Like, yeah. it's, it's just perfect in every way. Right. Right? I mean, I uh, think it's inarguable that to that point. Then, from that point, we also include a black metal album. Okay. Whether that be <laughs> Wanderers, whether that be um, Involved, whether that be Mestarin Kinsey. So... And I, then I'm gonna go for it. Say what sorry, you're gonna you can say. go. No, no, oh, say no. what you're gonna say. Well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously push for my boy, my my little child that I've I've seen grow into into an impeccable individual. Palimpsest. I think that deserves to be in our top three. I think I outlined a pretty good argument for it a couple of podcasts ago. So, all right. First of all, I have a problem. With, I don't have a problem with Involve, but I listened to both of those records today. I listened to um, Wanderers and I listened to Involve today, and I gotta say I enjoyed um, Wanderers more, and I felt more engaged throughout than I did Involve. And I obviously they're completely different records with two completely different goals, but I think that the song craft is just better on Wanderers. I think that our boys, a loss and oh, crap. <laughs> I, I forget his name. I think, I think it's like Jacob or something like that. Um, I really, I really think that they, it is Jacob. They just make, I, they just make perfect modern black metal with an atmospheric and ambient edge. And I, I don't know. So I don't think I, that can be. Argued. I'm not going to disagree with that point. I think as a whole, Wanderers, like on a song to song basis, is probably a little stronger than Involved. But I think Involved is literally the final form of atmospheric black metal. <laughs> like I think it embodies the genre so unbelievable, unbelievably, and like 
it, if to me it sounds like whatever Varg started in like the early '90s, taken to its penultimate form, it is. It's so obsessed with like the sublimity, the duality of nature, how it can be both awesome and terrifying in that same sense. It's so, it's so consumed by this like this sense of cold and sense of winter, mm. and everything from like the ridiculous track lengths to the the pure repetition on display to the production to the performances just sort of further that message Mm -hmm. and i think in that sense it's like unbeatable like i can't think of a better album in recent history that embodies atmospheric black metal more than that and sure i think if you take the songs out of context and wanderers they're a little stronger because the album is is just it's a very different format with involved it's like two and a half hours of just soup and that's the point with wanderers it's telling a clear story with a concept based around the planets right right and i think if we're judging it based on like the goals that these albums set out to achieve i think they both achieve them i just think the scope of involved's goal is a little larger so i'm noticing this on your list you care a lot more about scope than actual song quality yeah, I would argue totally right. you, you argue about scope rather than sound quality. See, I think we vary very differently in this. Um, as your place of the microphones extremely high up, even <laughs> even 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 I could argue the Emma Ruth Rundle can um, be argued with that one too. Because um, I, I don't know, man. I just I think obviously context is extremely important, but if I'm if I'm recommending a record to someone, if I'm recommending and saying which of these would be easier, that's not what I want to say. I want to say that if I'm going to recommend one of either Mare Cognitum or, or Wanderers or Involved first, I'm always going to go Wanderers. And I think that that has some power to it. Because obviously... You can't just walk up to someone on the street and be like, oh, hey, listen to this cool Paysage d'Hiver record. And they're like, it's static. And <laughs> I'm like, yes, it is static. And that's great. Because, and you could go into a whole thing. I think that it's important to acknowledge that, like, there are pe- there are those who don't listen to music for its contextual edge. And I think in that regard, Mercognum just wins. Uh, or, I gotta, I, I, I keep saying that. I gotta say, Wanderers just wins that battle. And I think overall, because of the fact that it appeals to a broader audience, it is the better record. And I put air quotes in well, that. We're on video. I, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in an apt analogy. And you know what? You know what, Sam? And I'm even... Before you say your analogy, I'd just like to say... That means my protest the hero argument would be a similar one. So I would have to raise that in my list. But go on with your analogy. So, Adam, when you're judging a book... Do you judge it by the strength of its individual chapters? Right? Or do you judge it by the collective like thematic impact of the book as a whole yeah but they're they're, they're different art forms well i'm sure judge, they're different art form do you judge well, a what's film the, exclusively by its plot and the answer is no, no you judge a film by the 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 its breath right and if we're looking at these albums because this is the top 40 albums of 2020 right we're, we're like the we're the like less than one percent that listens almost exclusively to albums over anything else it's also right? true yeah. So I think we should be judging these works based on their collective impact, not the over not the the consistent consistent greatness of their tracks or their runtime. Cuz for I mean, I think viewed in that light, my list makes a little more sense. But sure. I mean, that being said, all the albums that I have placed highly here, I don't think like so it's not like they have any stinkers. It's just that certain moments are a little more uh consistently engaging than others like i have protest the hero on the the top of my list and that's not because i think it's 
the objective, even though objectivity doesn't exist, the objective best album of the year in every facet, I think the sense it imparts upon the listener and the way that it achieves its goal um, sort of makes it the best song of the year for me because it connects with me so so strongly in a way that other albums don't. And I, I could make that argument for the other albums on my list. Like, for example, uh, Microphones in 2020. That's another one. Sure, as an, as an album, as a 44-minute long song, there are parts that don't ring quite as strongly as others. But I listened to it yesterday and I cried. It's just such an intensely emotional and visceral experience from start to end. And I think taken as a whole, its impact is just unbelievably weighty. Heck, I'd make that same argument for some of the albums uh, later on in the in the list. Like I know I have um Bloom by Fluis de Rars a lot higher than you do. And uh I'd I'd make the same argument for that. Sure, certain tracks aren't as slapping as the others, but once again, this is the third time I've said it, the impact of the album from start to end, the flow and the sense it imparts imparts on you as a listener, I think. Um, sort of makes up for that. I agree, as Anthony Fantano would say. Um, and you made All some right, so good points, but but I have I have a I have a retort. All right, hit me with your retort. This is gonna be a hot take, All but right. like, why isn't Taylor Swift on our best of list? Because in the same vein, the new Taylor Swift album is arguably your best work, and also sets out exactly to accomplish what it does. Or accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do, which is be a nice little lo-fi quarantine album um, that's much more personal uh, and stripped down. And while not all the songs are good, I think overall the record does a really nice job at conveying Taylor's personal growth as an artist, as well as um, her position on fame and well, sounds now, like a microphones in 2020. <laughs> no, now, now I agree, but like, I'm not going to include Taylor Swift on this list. No, that's because we don't like Taylor Swift for obvious reasons. <laughs> well, I know, but especially when it comes to the microphones, like I understand, and I know we're kind of branching out and this is going to happen, but like the album feels too high concept for me and it's the it's the same thing with the liturgy album like and obviously i understand what the artist is trying to say but i think it, it almost it doesn't get in the way of the actual music but it it puts a hindrance on the enjoyability and what they can, what they can craft for their musicianship like well, that microphones album is very dry and there's nothing wrong with that. And like, I cry every time I listen to it. I'm not going to lie. I do, but <laughs> I, I like, it's a, I love it. It's a great record, but it does feel a little bogged down in Phil's storytelling. And I understand that that's the whole point of the record, but for me, that's not exactly what I'm looking for in my music. No, look, I understand. I think, for at least for me, the mic the the way that the microphones avoids that paradox is by having moments of extreme emotional resonance. Um, you know, we have uh, all the moments where the instrumentation switches up uh, pretty big. We have the moment like the pr- the mellotron breakdown in the middle. When I sit alone in the dark and free or whatever and then we have like the reprises towards the end like for me those those are like sort of the emotional core and they make it so even though the album can be a little dry and is probably a little too long that makes up for it for me and like i mean this is a dumb comparison but i my favorite author is faulkner right faulkner's not known for his intensely enjoyable prose or you know, the the immediacy in which he impacts you from his moment-to-moment moment storytelling. He's known for his bigger picture implications in the way he can craft a narrative and uh, sort of cr- conjure such grand thematic gestures through literature. 
that resonate deeply with his audience. And I think, I think honestly, you can make an argument that microphones in 2020 does that amazingly well. And that sort of obfuscates the, the, uh, the oral shortcomings that it might have. Okay. Does it bother you at all? that you need prior context to go into this album and enjoy it fully. Does that bother you at all? Uh, because it bothers me. <laughs> so, so I, I'd agree. I, I think it, there's something a little bothering about that, but at the same time, like who says there are any rules when it comes to, to listening to music? And I like, I think I granted as I like, I'm Adam, we're not even huge Phil Everham fans. I've listened to like four Phil Everham albums and the man has like 40. Right. And we're still able to enjoy it immensely with having like basically the bare minimum knowledge of it. I understand. I agree. Um, but I think that there is something to say for that high concept with that attached to it. You know, the, you need, and the same, I'm going to bring up liturgy again. But the same thing goes <laughs> for them. Because you go into Origin of the Alimonies and you're like, what the fuck does this mean? What am I hearing? What like what like today, <laughs> today I looked up the the P, like I, I found the PDF of um the Transcendental Black Metal like pamphlet or whatever that came out a few years ago. Like the thirty one page document. Yeah, and I read through it. And I was like I mean, like, I get well, isn't it. it a, isn't it about a play that Hunter Hunt Hendricks wrote? Well, it, 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 it's an <laughs> opera. It's an opera, but it's also supposed to be perichio, perichorosis or whatever. I can't. It's Latin. Um, or it's, yeah, it's a Latin <laughs> term, but it means, like, it's a culmination of art that m- combines music, religion, and um, one more, drama. Music, religion, and drama in one art form uh, to a perfect capacity that can not only help you transcend, but also reflects that. That's what gotcha. that's what um, Origin of the Alimonies is about, right? It's about maybe, maybe I got to read Transcendental Black Metal <laughs> and then but listen like, to it. That I like. Granted, like Hawk and this album. And the origin is on my list. Um, but, like, I enjoy those without having to know anything about the stuff. Um, but I I feel like there is, there's got to be some sort of thing in the back of my mind that's like, well, I don't really fully understand this. And so I don't know if I can judge it appropriately and praise it. No, as- I, I mean, I, I understand that. It's sort of like... Um, like starting them a couple years ago, they put a retro casual by cleric on their list, and the I think um the write up and it was like I don't understand this album. I probably never will, but I can tell it's amazing and unique. So it's up here. It was right. like their number fourth best album of the mm-hmm. year or something. But I don't know. I feel I feel like we got engaged in a little bit of that. That being said, I think the microphones in twenty twenty is a lot more moment to moment enjoyable and has a lot more emotional res- resonance at least on the surface level than a uh, origin of the alimonies. Certainly. I would I would agree. But uh I feel like we're getting too bogged down in like the broader picture. Let's hash it out right now, top three albums. Ulcerate's there. Palimpsest is there. What's th- <laughs> in- I don't want Palimpsest is there. I also think you're criminally underrating Serpent Column. Like holy okay, look- shit, dude. Like the two guys in Serpent Column, not only are they absolute machines, like in terms of output. But they're absolutely fucking robots in terms of performance. Okay, like, look, Circum Column is is fucking nuts. That album is phenomenal. Every time I listen to it, I get chills. Right? Except I'm the concept guy, man. I think I think I think there's something to be said for maintaining that level of quality for two and a half hours in both Wanderers and Involved's case. Then why is your Wanderer so far down? Well, because I listened to Wanderers yesterday and. I found myself getting bored as and sometimes because the album is just so long. When I listen to Wanderers out of context, it works a lot better for me. Maybe it's the ADHD, but I've like I can fucking jam. I can mosh in my room to Jupiter or Saturn or Uranus, basically any track on that album. But when I put them on side by side, I just kind of zone out and focus on whatever else I'm doing. Whereas Involved, I feel like that's the intended experience to some extent. And that's why, for me at least, it works a little better. You know, I could just lay in bed, pitch black, 
and a th- sauce on involved at like 100 volume and feel like I'm a experience that album in like the right way. Whereas with Wanderers, I feel like it's a more engaging minute to minute or it's a more demanding minute to minute uh, listening experience. Sure. But as we're progressing, um, I like the Aranzi Pazuzu album way more than the Haken album. That's fair. I mean, I think, I think that... I think that... And I've listened to the Haken album a lot. <laughs> but like, <laughs> no, seriously. like, Dude, come Messiah on. Tell me that Haken album isn't everything you want from that band and more. Come no, on. No, it is. It is. It is. But you know what? When I was... And I don't know. I've talked... I think I've talked... I talked about this in the review that I did from a star in Kinsey. But, like, the, the fucking emotions that I felt from some of the tracks on this are like I've never felt before. The end of I will always say this. The end of o- Oikmenton, I think that's what it is. Sali <laughs> is literally the most hair raising thing I've ever experienced in music, ever. And like I get when when those synths start to build and 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 the riffs are just going off and um, Yun Hiss is just fucking dying in the <laughs> mic. Like it's just. It's okay. Look, look. I I can. I'll gladly put the Zuzu in the top five. That album's yeah. phenomenal. It, it, it's like it everything. That. It's everything modern metal should be. Mm-hmm. And every time, like, what I love about the album so much is like the way it flows and how you know it hits you over the head over and over again for four songs or for five songs, and then you kind of expect we're gonna have a chill outro, and no. then we just get eight minutes of chaotic black metal with Ty Van Porty. Like, I remember playing that in the car for one of my normie friends and them just having to shut it off because, like, it was just too much. Yeah, and, like, it, I play a lot of noise, so. It's just so intense the entire time. Yeah, no, look, I feel I feel like this is the best Ronzi Pazuzu album. And the best Ronzi Pazuzu album should probably be in the top five of any year. The oh, band yeah. are just so, like, we we saw them back in, oh, gosh, last year? It was last year. Oh, it feels like like it was yesterday. <laughs> we saw we we saw yeah, time. Am I right, Phil Elvrum? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So when we saw them, like I don't know, it's sort of like the live energy they channel and their ability to just masterfully, uh, I don't know, distill like all their genres into just a beautiful soup. I don't know. It's definitely top five material. Yeah. So ulcerate, ulcerate, and uh, Mastari and Kinsey are in the top five as of now. Yeah. Um. Ulcerate's probably above it because it's just that good. Oh yeah, no, Ulcer- yeah. As much as like, I also- love the Aranzi Pazuzu album, like I just I, I, I can't touch it. I can't There's touch like the when album. when people say perfect albums, that can sound kind of dumb, but find a flaw in Ulcerate. Like <laughs> if you're not a metalhead and you're not a fan of the uber Fine. pretentious, fine. Right, but like, but if you're if you're like someone in our position and you like live for you know the hipster approved pitchfork brand of underground metal then ulcerate is just perfect it's the it's the the logical conclusion for like what gore got started 20 years ago it has so many emotional highs every song is is perfect and the album just doesn't let up and ah oh, i don't know it's, you it's, feel like, it's just you amazing feel, you feel like you're dying i feel like i'm like being sucked into a black hole when i'm listening to this album yeah whenever i hear drawn to the next void it's like do 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 I don't know. That song's hecking amazing. So All Star is definitely there. Pazuzu is definitely there. Love We're probably that. putting one more. Another. I mean, I feel like we can't just do four black metal albums and then All Star eight. Well, all right. Well, all right. So the t- all right. I don't know. I look, think... dude. I'm getting Palimpsest in the top three. All right. You know what? I'm willing to make a compromise. Scoot all right. All right. Scoot. Hit me. Scooch Ulcerate to number one, put Palimpsest in the three slot, and Mare Cognitum in the two slot. Okay, I, okay. I, 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 hold on, hold on. You know what? We can throw, we can put Ewald in number four, and Aranz is in number five. Microphone's in number six. That's the biggest compromise right, I'll, ta- I'll ever make. That That's it. That's <laughs> I'll take, uh, fuck it, as, I'll take it. That's as far fuck as I'm it, going. Fuck it, I'll take it. That is as far as I'm going. All right, so ulcerate. Wow, I, I wasn't oh, expecting wow. Adam to actually cave and put Palimpsest that high. I hate it. I I, I hate that I'm doing it. 
Um, I feel like this is our list order every year. I don't know if the the one thing we, the one we never published for 2017 is literally top albums Bell Witch, second album is Piron, and third album is Clairvoyant. It's the album we enjoy the most at number three, but held back by whatever weird hipster notions we have as well, of hey, prog is not you know, a real well, genre. Okay, but okay, but the 2018 um was not that, and neither was the 2019 even. Because, like, we put Bible songs and you won't get what you want at number one. True. Well, with that logic, Couch Slut should be at number one. Well, we're not following that trend. Speaking of Couch Slut. Yeah, so I feel like like this is a three-way battle between Couch Slut, Vile Creature, and at least for me, Haken, for this slot for number seven. Um, I think you can line them up. I think you can just, Gosh, line, you just line them up. I think I think Haken is probably better than Couch Slut. And, and Couch Slut's probably... Alright, well, I think, Haken's tough, better, right? I, think, I think Haken's better than both of them. I agree. Haken is just perfect prog. Yeah. Um, like, but, every time I hear, every time I hear the Cockroach King reprise in Messiah Complex, I just, I lose it. I have to change yeah. my pants immediately after. So, the, all right. I still want to keep... Alright, we're branching out now. So, you have in your bottom half, you got... Um, Alphaville. Alphaville. <laughs> um, but I have Svalbard and Mama Leek. I think... Alright, I, wanna... all right, I which... think... Uh, I just think... Couch Slut, I think, inarguably, is better than Vile Creature. I think it I has, agree. Vile creature, it... creature, I think wins conceptually, but Couch Slot is just perfect. Like, yeah. well, that's not perfect. Like, there are a few minor details, but as far as like sludgy noise metal is, it's it's exactly what I what I want, what I need. It distills the chaos of 2020 into one mm-hmm. nice little album about you know molestation, drugs. It's bad. The horrors of humanity. <laughs> it's horrible. It's fucking badass. Like, I I just turned 40. It's brutal. It's heavy. And it's catchy. All, all the songs have hooks. All of them. Yeah, what, I, like, I what more could you want? Yeah. And um, then Frout's Frout, that's probably followed by Vile Creature. Look, I mean, I don't know. I want Mama Leek and Svalbard in contention. All right, fine. Let's 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 use the same let's use the same logic I've been using or you've been using. Uh, oh my gosh, now I have Alphaville stuck in my head. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, let's use the same logic. So I think as a whole, like all three of those albums are great. I think Vile Creature is a little stronger conceptually, and I think it's a better listening experience. For Svalbard, not every. So hear me, hear me out, hear me out. For Svalbard, I can't. I don't have clear hooks in mind or i don't no have clear way. moments in mind don't even that say I'm, well that. no 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 hear me no let me finish this thought that for certain songs like for personally for silent restraint um and and i i always forget what that song sounds like okay look and i know that's getting a little nitpicky but for the other two albums i can remember moments from every track i think if we're talking concept, Mama Leek wins. Because, yeah, so, because, so, because so, Vile correct. Creatures, I don't want to say the whole thing is their concept. You know, the entire, I guess, scope of LGBTQ and trans rights. Um, all rights, anti-oppression, blah, blah, blah. I think that's their, that's their whole deal. The thing that stands out for Mama Leek for me is just the, the complete ability to just switch on a win. They fucking made a rock album in 2017, and they started off making chaotic black metal. Like, any band, I think, that can not only switch their sound to something drastically different, but also switch their concept and what they're talking about to something completely different, and have it be successful at the same time. I mean, isn't this album? Isn't this album about the uh, the war, the brutal war movie? Come and see. No, you'd think that. But it's, I mean, at least from what I can tell, um, like Cabrini Green is a is a reference to um, um, the Chicago housing um, 
project that was like uh like i think it was um like gangland basically um it was a gang thing i think i think i think similar to imperial triumphant i don't know the whole concept but i'm pretty sure it's like an urban um early 1900s like pre world war 2 um urban metropolis something or other now granted well, there's no also lyrics, all so live recorded right yeah so it's all live recorded no published lyrics um and yeah i don't know i mean i think all the sound, sound songs sound great um i think that every mo every track has its moment and i just i, I don't know i just Look, I, I, I think i, I think it's I a get, good album i get wild to some of the tracks on this record like eating on blessed meat is just an unabashed banger you have um cowards which is just like a droning and draining fucking eight minutes of just screaming in your fucking ear cowards no <laughs> bend at the knee dude Look, I, I think this album's really good. I just don't know if, if it hits the same consistent highs as like some of the other records in the top tens. Like, I think it's a good album front to back. I think all the songs have their moments, but I think every song's like an eight. Okay, but compared to Vile Creature, because that's what we're that's what we're dealing with right now. We're 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 parsing that out. I think that Mama Leak beats Vile Creature, not by much, but it does beat it. And look, I, know, I, I, I will admit. I will admit, Apathy take, Took Helm, bro, like, best song, one of the best songs of the year. Absolutely. I'll agree. I'll admit. Um, and same with, same with Harbinger of Nothing. Um, but, like, I don't want to say the other two tracks are not as good, but they're not as good, I think, as those two Yeah, no, I, I, the album definitely I, uh, starts and begins with its best songs. But I those think, songs and the moments in between are so good. I think... Mama Leek has the consistency. Between between just those two records, I think that it wins in terms of consistency, concept, and arguably performance. Because, like, while the Vile Creature album's awesome, it's pretty simple. The, the, the fucking bullshit that they're doing on the Mama Leek album, they're doing weird time signature crap, they're playing blues rock with fucking metal drums. Like, they're just, I think, I feel like it's another, they're just, Mama Leek's on another side plane of this existence, making <laughs> some form of music that we don't really know, but it's awesome, and I think that it trumps out the Valkyrie Creature album. I don't know. I don't know. My I, opinion. Th I think, I think Valkyrie Creature has more, is a little more emotionally resonant. I think, I think the highs of that are, are pretty unmatched this year. But you know what, Adam? I'll concede you just just because you you gave me you gave me the uh, you let me get Palace yeah, in the top big, three. I gave you a big fucking hand, so Mama I'll, I'll find Mama Leek, Violet Creature, Mama Leek. I'm in for you, anonymous boys. I got your back. Are they anonymous? Are they? They Dutch? are anonymous. They're no, they're an anonymous two piece from California. Oh, wait, the, like, that, that's funny. Yep. When you said California, I was going to be like, oh, the Norwegian one? <laughs> oh. No. All right, so that is our top ten. Wow. Were we happy with this? Well, all right. Well, hold on. It's only, we're recording this on December 1st, for all transparency's sake. Could change. It could, it, it could change. I'm not going to say this is final. But as of now, our best albums of the year are... Ulcerate, Americogonum and Spectral Lore Split, Protest the Hero, Paysage Diver, Aranci Pazuzu, Microphones, Haken, Couch Slut, Mama Leek, and Vile Creature. And then right after that, 100 Gex and the Tree of Clues. Of course. <laughs> no. I almost put it on like as like my 39. I was like, ah, I can't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now. What, where is all uh, the hype for Emma Ruth Rundle now? I want to hear from you. 
because I love that album, but I don't get it. It's just like it's the most mature take on post grunge I've ever heard. All the songs feel really developed. It's it's absolutely massive. And Ruth Rundle's like ethereal alto perfectly contrasts with Thou's shrieks. The riffs are there. The interpolations of '90s riffs are there. The interplay between the crushing crushing sludge and the ethereal leads are there and the thing flows beautifully from start to finish every song has hooks every song has a climax the performances are phenomenal and sounds amazing it's just it's just well done well executed in every aspect and it's also it's like the best take on post grunge i've ever heard Mm. well that being that being said that being said i think alphaville is better than it (laughs) i agree um it's hmm. I've I've had a weird relationship with Alphaville this year because I I think I think part of it is the fact that like it's it's just it's so it's so high concept it's so highbrow it's so above my pay grade um and I've only recently I think started to actually appreciate it um and I don't I think that's why it's kind of low on my list because in, in actuality it should be higher. I'm not gonna lie; it should. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm comfortable with putting it in top fifteen. Somewhere. So, what's your what, where do you, what do you want as your top eleven? Because for so, me, all right, all it's right. Alphaville well, right. or Emma Ruth Rundle. Svalbard, get in there! I fucking love that album. Dude. Oh my god! I forgot. Sorry, I forgot about Svalbard. Um, that I, album look, is I think just, I think Svalbard's time... top fifteen. I think Svalbard's top fifteen material. I don't think it. I don't think it's like number eleven though. It's just every time I listen to that album, I get so hyped and so angry at the patriarchy. It's everything I want in my post core, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> look, I I I think uh, I think I already said this, but this is the album Asteroid should have made. Yes, this is the <laughs> this is where they should have gone. Yeah, look, look, so, yeah, Svalbard's astounding. It's it's a testament to like what the genre is capable of, and it really speaks to just how genre lines don't matter in 2020 because it's mm-hmm. everything. It's black and post hardcore with shoegaze, like noise rock influence. It's it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. It's it's engaging front to back. I think I think Alphaville's a better artistic statement. Though. I I would agree. I, I mean, I agree with you 100. Um, percent Or like clipping, like clipping's in the top 15. Oh yeah, I yeah yeah. I'm not gonna argue that clipping's there. Sorry. All right. Here's what we're we, we're juggling. All right. I'm gonna put this off to our side of our list. We got we got Svalbard. Yeah, it's really like clipping Svalbard. Clipping. Uh. Uh. Imperial Triumphant. What else do we got? What else do we got to fight about? Uh, probably I mean, Cathedos. Dude, why isn't that already there? Alright, well... Exactly. That's my 11. That's my vote for number 11. <laughs> I fucking forgot about him. Bastard. Oh my god, it was number 2 on your original top. Yeah, it was number 2, dude. I fucking... That album is just gross. It's so right. fucking... Yeah, it's All right. so in your face. <laughs> Alright, tell you what. Uh, Cathedos, Alphaville, and then Svalbard. Fine. Alright, so... Alright, Cathedos... No. Serpent... Alright, Serpent Column at 11. Imperial Triumphant at 12. Svalbard at 13. Clipping at 14. And then Emmeruth Rundle <sighs> Man, I don't know. I'll argue right, well, for let's... Primitive Man and Katera. And Antzat. And Fawn Limbs. You just hit me with four albums, bro. And they're all great. What about Wobbler? Wobbler's good. On my list, it's higher than Clipping. It shouldn't be, though. It shouldn't be higher my than Clipping. Secret. Uh, I love it. Well, I love it. I am, I've been so jamming So, what albums am I arguing? All right. Primitive Man, Antzat, and Fawn Limbs. So... I and, think his and, albums are all and, amazing. And, and the Katera record. I literally never listened to the Katera record. You need record, to listen so. to it. It is the well, best I can't, melodic I, black metal album of the year. I can't in good faith put it in the top 20 if I've never listened to it. 
This is why this is subject to change. Because tomorrow Sam's going to listen to that album, the three tracks over 50 minutes, and he's going to go, wow, Adam, you were right. That 30-minute long track is pretty killer. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> right. anyway. Adam doesn't even... I don't doesn't even like oh shit what's what 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 band was I about to make a joke out of? Adam doesn't even like. All right, we're finding it. We're we're getting there. Um, oh, almost there. Merc Rider with Exile of Shadows. SMH. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. I, the Primitive Man was in my top ten for a long time this year. Yeah. Okay, the other that, two have not been. If we're talking about good metal albums, because oh man, that like. Concept aside, that's one of the best albums this year. If we're if we're throwing concept to the wind, I think that immersion is just it's unbridled heaviness in the genre, and that needs to be addressed. Because not only are all the songs extremely engaging, very dynamic, but they're just so fucking heavy. They have the density yeah, of a man's fucking neutron like, star. If their moto- if their motto, if their uh, modus operandi is literally just heavy as balls, slow music, like this is this is perfect. This album is amazing, and I I'd love to see them live and just like collapse. When we saw Primitive Man live, I felt sick because they were so heavy. Mm-hmm. I'm but, I mean, executive... is it better than Cathedos? <laughs> no, Cathedos is there already. We already went there. Oh, we already put. We, oh, I'm sorry. Sir, I'm sorry. All right, look at the list. This is this is what we're. I'm look. Sorry, I'm looking at the list. Jesus. All right, I'm fine with that. I think. I think my my girl Emma Ruth Rundle and Thau should be the, the the next album then. All right, fine. All right. But I don't think the I don't think the Ansat should be that high. Dude, it's, it's, it's the really best. Dude, album. it's the it's the best modern black metal album of the year. We literally, we literally put like eight black metal albums ahead. Yeah, but of it, but the, but those are all weird and uh, Emwald is something else. Fucking Mare Cognitum is something else. If we're talking straight Maguire worship, okay, like what I guess modern black metal is, Anzot does it perfectly. And you can't tell me you didn't make it through that album. Like fucking, just you're you're going ham. Like yeah, all those I tracks mean, just drive. I don't enjoy it as any of the any of the other albums like in that area on my list. You don't wait. What do you mean? Like I don't find it as engaging as Blom or Wabla, or even like Asoc mm. Trillium. Hmm. I, I I'd make an argument against Asoc Trillium, but I can agree with the other two. I also think that it should probably be behind Fawn Limbs because that album is just kind of gross. Oh yeah, Fawn Limbs is gross, but I, I feel, I feel like I feel like Limbs is top top twenty material. I feel like the seventeen spot is kind of like Blom or Wabla. All right, well, as much as I love Blom, I think I'd rather put Wobbler there because Blom what, what Blom band? has Wobbler Wobbla. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Just, I think, I think, I think Fluisterar's, their style is great, and they do it perfectly. But, there's not enough on that album. I need that yeah, album to be twice as, I need, that, I need that album to be twice as long. And I honestly think that that's a huge part of it, because, like, we've already been through Ewald and, um, fucking, what's it called? Wanderers, and like, it's it's just not enough to me. I got you. It's just it's just not. There's just not enough there. Um, we can put we can put fun limbs after Wobbler. Yeah, you want fun limbs? Did ah. we put primitive man in yet? Yeah, yeah, prim- okay, yeah cool. primitive primitive. Sorry, man. I'm like bouncing between like three tabs. But yeah, that fun limbs. Out. I like how we have I like how we have a sock trillium in the exact same spot in both of our lists. <laughs> Yeah, um, that one also fell on. Realistically, me. that's probably that's probably the next. That's it's probably that's probably the next leg like, input, right? Um, like number nine, number nineteen. Because we're, we're looking at top twenty now, and like, what are what are we missing that we both feel strongly deserves to be in the top twenty? I'm gonna make a case for the Fair album, even though it just came out. I think I think if anyone has taken the Sumac formula. Brought and kept it the way it should ha- not should have, but 
the way, all right, if you take the deal and you throw a little more noise and make all the songs twice as long, you get this album, and frankly, I want nothing more in my sludge metal. And granted, Primitive Man gets it for its heaviness, but like, if I, I want just that from Primitive Man. Like, this is, this is not the future of sludge metal, but like, if I had to give one album the best sludge metal album of the year, it would probably be this one, just because of how intense, noisy, and well written it is. And look, I think Fair is amazing. I don't think it's top twenty amazing though, because I've only listened to it like twice. <sighs> You're a fool. Okay, let's put a sock trillion in there. We can fine, both agree fine, on that. Fine, fine, fine. And then we're basically fighting for the twenty spot on my list. I have Puron at twenty. I think the Puron's a little overrated. Well, I also, to it again? I yes, I have listened to it again. I've listened to it a few times again. I like it. But I haven't, like, it's it's just Paron, man. And as much as I'd love to throw it at number two and the Bell Witch album at number one, I, I th- this year I just I feel like I can't. I feel like I feel like the repetition of the Paron formula. They didn't. They did change a lot on this record, but to me, it didn't make as much of an impact as when I heard What Passes for Survival. And even going back to Mother Virtues, um, like, I feel like the difference between those two records is such, is so monumental that the difference between What Passes for Survival and Abscess Time isn't great enough to make me more engaged in the record. Because, I mean, that's, that's what I, that's what I go back, that's what I go back to Piron for, is the experiment experimentality and the just uh, fucking whatever the fuck the bullshit those boys in New York are drinking because it's something else. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. I think, I think it's, it's top 20 material. I think, I think it's phenomenal in every aspect. I do. It is a little, it's very pure on you, but like, I think the noise rock and no wave personally make up for it. And like, it has so many powerful moments and such a powerful condemnation of our system at a time when the system is utterly failing so many Americans. As you can see. All right, so what if we put Psychonaut list. at 20? I don't want to have this conversation, Sam. The album did not come out this year. You were, so we're, I'm getting Psychonaut. Year. I'm or getting Psychonaut year. on this list. No. I'm getting Psychonaut on this list. Then it's going to be at the end because it's going to be an honorable mention. <laughs> what do you, you mean? You missed your year. Dude, I, Dude look, the- as much. Look, I've listened to that album a few times beginning of the year when it was re-released when it was re-released because it was released in 2018 and that should be yeah, enough like to 10, automatically and like just 10 people heard it and then it got re-released who's all right sam if our band re-released our record in 2020 or in 2022 and everyone oh man blow their socks off best album of 2022 no it's 2019 well, album. I mean, a lot of publications that included the debut Sa- S- D- Seal and Arter EP included it in 20, I think 17 when it came out in like 2016. So are we are we other publications, Sam? Well, exactly. We're we're this is um this is a goddamn communism. We're 50 50, baby. And if one of us says yes and the other says no, that's uh you round up, right? Democracy has failed. <laughs> Democracy <laughs> has failed. <laughs> Look, I, I don't think, know. I think Psych- Psychonaut deserves to be in the bottom half. Okay, that album's phenomenal. It's amazing. I agree. It's a great album. I do. But I think a third party needs to be consulted. I don't look. 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 There's got to be. Look. The, all right. The deadlight would be on this album, or would be on this list. Probably. If I went back and was like, oh, fuck, I forgot how good this Fen album is. I need to put it on my 2020 list. Yeah, or like Amygdala. Like, there's, yeah. so, there's a lot of... There's a, there ton, a lot of, there's a ton of records that came out in, like, the very back half of last year. Or shit that I just... Like, even fucking... 
like that fire the the debut Firelink album should have been on our list last year. Oh it my should've. god, that that record is disgustingly. No, good. it's sick. But you know, I'm not gonna put it on this year, but just because I forgot about it. Or well, it, I mean, I I think I think Psychonaut is like a special case. Generally, when an album gets re released by a major label, like after the a band gets picked up, I, I think it's fine. But look, it's gonna be in the bottom half. Fuck Psychonaut. <laughs> it's that album is litter like if you were to tell me like the perfect evolution of like the ocean isis tool and hecking um uh adoration for none band gojira no Jesus. no i can't why am i why am i having a brain talking? fart here what are you talking about no um the distance in amen Ra. jesus that took me way too long jesus all those vans, all those vans, and you're telling me, hey, put them in a blender and take the best elements from all of them, and then write amazing 15-minute-long songs. Psychonaut just does that. I think Psychonaut is a very special case, but I I, I, I have standards, Sam. <laughs> all right. You can plant well, a separate so flag my... in the ground for Psychonaut next to the pillar that is of the best albums list. <laughs> Alright, so hear me out. My my pick for number 20 is Puron. What's your pick, Fair? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, do we have a help? Do we have like a, a compromise here? Because I'm looking at both of our lists and I don't see like any album relatively close that we both like. Like we could what? We could put like Blom here. I already have we already have Blom in there. No, you don't. Oh no, we don't. Yes, yeah. Blum, All right, Blum. cool. Blum's twenty. Blum's twenty. Then like um, top. So uh, let, now let's look at the top twenty-five albums that should be in the top twenty-five. For me personally, Piron should be there. The yeah. the horse of Caligula should be there. Yeah. I'll, I'll allow Fair to be in there. One or two more. Greg. 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 Okay, Greg, dude. Greg, Greg. I guess I guess now is the time. I don't like this album. This album. What do this you album mean? Is good. You don't like this, this album, album look this album is good it does nothing for me it's just like adequately written and produced like industrial All slash right. everything else the man does okay there's a reason that greg is not on your list and there's a reason that dog legs not on my list and i think that we can't have either one of them then I okay have, neither of them, them in the top con- I, I we have to remove them from contention at least from the the higher echelons of our list. Because, yeah, no, I look, agree because love, the bottom fifteen, the bottom fifteen is like free reign. We can we can just throw whatever we want in there. I love I love the dog leg album, but like the reasoning, I, I don't know the the personal taste aspect is hard because there's only two of us and we will have such clashes. As it, I mean, it's like Honoris doesn't like, like post hard. No, I. You're right. I don't. But. I don't know, man. That's it. I Can we put Lament up here? Lament? By who? Touche, Amore. No, fuck you. Um, I want to make an argument for Greg, though. Like, I would argue the synth pop tracks are better than the metal tracks. And I, You're probably right. And I, I, I just... They're all hooky. They're all really well done. Like, every time I listen to them, I just get filled. I, like, my heart does a little flutter. I, I get a nice little serotonin <laughs> blast in my brain. I don't know. I just think I just I think it's overall not a feel good album, but like I can put it on when I'm trying to jam and be like, yes, these tracks. Your slap. deep set eyes. All right, I will. I don't like deep set, but the rest of the tracks in the album pretty freaking good. Like, okay, look, Fire don't get me wrong. Water. The album's good. It's just, dude, it gives off big boomer energy, and I'm not about that. Why do you? What do you mean it gives off big boomer energy? Explain. Dude, it sounds like it was released in 1991 and mixed by Trent Reznor. What's the problem with that? I don't know. It's just it feels a little dated to me. That's a commodity. Well, you're you think it's dated because it's just it's got 80 synth pop in it. You don't like 80 synth. Well, not pop. just that. I mean, look, I just I don't think this album does enough. I don't think it's consistently great. I think it has some slappers. Uh, I, I don't think front to back it's great. I think it's pretty. All right, so we're not ta- all right. So top 25. What what did I just say? Piron, Caligula's horse. Fair. Fair. And then okay, gosh. Of the of the ones we both have here, probably either have a or Gulch. Both. Just throw them both. We have four that's five. Alright, awesome. That's I mean five. so we're not we're not gonna put um Abyss the Unleash the Archers there then? Is that a little no. bit lower? 
No, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I listen, alright, I re, alright. When you sent me your topster originally, and I saw Unleash the Archers, and you said Unleash the Archers, I was like, alright, Sam, I get it. Unleash the Archers. Look, dude, that album's, that you know, album is but perfect no, I, for I, 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 I listened to it today, and I was like, okay, like, yeah, like, there, there's no way this is not on the list. Um, and so I, I, I threw it on, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's 25 material. I'm good with. I agree. All right, so I'm good with fighting out Ferrer, um, Gulch, Piron, uh, Gulch, Piron, Avukrunu, Seahorse, and Seahorse. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with those. Yeah, like I mean, we had a we had a, I, the we had a fight position though. Um, Gul- I mean, well. So of the of these record, my gut tells me to go with Piron as the highest, but I could but like they're all really good. I think if if Seahorse didn't have gosh, one one second, let me just look at the track list for this record. The fact that I always forget the name of the one track that isn't good says something. If this if this if this uh if the Seahorse record had a better t- better tunes in place of resonate in like half of Ocean Rise, this would just no this album would way. Sorry, sorry, I did not mean Ocean Rise. The it's entire- Resonate. If this album didn't have Resonate, it would be, like, the best thing ever. Ocean Rise is amazing. Are you going to let one track keep it from you? Just one. Well, well, you know, you, you, you what, what, what's your critique with this record? Because Tempest, Slow Violence, Salt, Ocean Rise, Valkyrie, Autumn, and the Ascent are all phenomenal. I think Valkyrie's I have no a complaint. Li- I have no complaint. I love the hook on Valkyrie. I think Valkyrie's a great song. Underrated bop. I think Seahorse, I wish there wasn't an interlude, but there is. But you know what? I still get through that album fine. And I sing along to Resonance every goddamn time because it's a good melody. And honestly, all right, fine. the drums aren't bad. Seahorse, Seahorse, Seahorse at 21, 21. right? Seahorse. I, was, I, was, I, th- I, was, I thought you didn't like this album. I guess we just haven't talked about it in a while. Well, dude. I fucking... No, dude. Look, yeah, look, it's so good. It's the, like, worst, I can, it's I, the worst two... It's the worst Kalia's Horse album since bloom but you know what it doesn't mean it's not it doesn't mean it's not fucking god tier yeah like every like even just like i still sometimes i'll just be like cooking or whatever and i'll just get the salt bridge stuck in my head oh. where it's like i still remember the toxin i yeah. love this album yeah no this album's phenomenal my my boys jim sam Hitting it, hitting us with absolute slappers. This album sounds immaculate. Rhythm sections are great. Riffs are great. Melodies mm. are even better than both of those. My God, the ride work on like the ascent makes the drum work on the ascent makes me come. The whole song makes me orgasm. Kaigo's horse really is just like the playbook on how to do tasteful gent. Yes. Or Haken. Gosh, I just want to... Remember when they, we were going to see them live and they were going to open the set with uh, Bloom Stop. into Marigold? Stop. Oh my god. Stop. I don't want to hear it. They're rescheduling for next year. God, I just think... God, pray for a vaccine that just comes out of the sky. Um, I know. I just want to be able to sit... To, to, to hear, like, the Bloom intro. Wake up! And then hear... Alright. Alright. Peron. Fair. Gold Chavacrunu. No. Uh, my Hava gut Kruno. says Havacruno, then Piron. Really? That's interesting. Dude, Havacruno is amazing. Agree. Look, I, I agree with you, but I was not expecting that to come out of your Look, mouth. well, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, of, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Donald Trump reading the art of the dealer right now. All right. I'll take Havacruno, Piron, um, Gulch Fair. Gul- Gulch Fair. That's, I'm, fi- I'm fine with that. I, 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 I will. I mean, are we going to justify these picks or like. Just I go mean, off the ESP we have from doing I al- this for I years. Also, I also re-listened to the Gulch album because it was originally not on my list. And I, I, I still think that it's a little simple. And I understand that it's unbridled. You just don't like hardcore, I, dude. I, just, I, just, I, I don't like hardcore. That's what it comes down to. But, like, this album's heavy as shit. And they're going <laughs> so hard. Like they're just yeah, and like every like I I yeah. the stereo gums list came out the stereo gums stereo gums list came out earlier today and it had Gulch on it and their write up was awesome. It was like they they managed to pack eight songs into sixteen minutes and those eight songs say more than most bands can manage in like an yeah. hour. Yeah. It's nuts. Like gosh, every time I listen to this album, no matter what I'm doing, I start start crowd killing my <laughs> yeah. chair. 
you start you start oh my it's them. like and uh there was a really good um i know we referenced Terragram a lot but we both love like it's a great site um for a let the roundup begin they they posted a uh, uh an article a column on on gulch and how like sort of their ubiquitous internet live shows and their weird form of merch have like gained prominence in quarantine america and it's it's interesting i don't know look gulch fucking slap like when when these guys when when covid ends in eight years and these guys hit the palladium in worcester <laughs> i will i will kill someone to this album <laughs> like and it'll be amazing yeah um yeah i don't know gulch is great um following from there yeah no we talked we talked about everything i mean the only one we really touched on is have a crew new and like i don't, don't know that's a review of that out no that got scrapped. That was a oh. bonus review that got scrapped. But what I was well, going to say in that Have a Crew new one is, holy crap, like, it's, you go into this album and you're like, okay, you know what, it's going to be a folk black metal album. It'll be probably chill, it'll probably be mid-tempo, you know, have some, some nice lutes in there, maybe maybe some other inter- interesting instrument. no. This you this album goes so hard for no reason. Yeah. For no, it doesn't. It, it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. No, literally, like exactly what you said. Like when I hear fa- pagan black metal or folk black, I think like late mid period Bathory or whatever with like you know nice acoustic interludes yeah. in between like mid paced black metal section. And this this album just begins with a fucking Finnish choir, and you're like, oh shit! And then the blast beats kick in. No, and, seriously, oh my, and it, it, it's, like it's, this is so fast. Like th- these songs are going at like a fucking they're going Mach ten, and like the riffs they're, they're tremoloing these these folk melodies, and I'm like what you you can't follow it because it, it's just going so unbelievably fast yeah and like it's know. just it's 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 handled so so well like every song is hooky from moment to mo- like start to finish it just slaps like if we if we liked more like i guess traditional styles of black metal this would be on in the top five like yeah. this is what to me when i heard an all in the crowd described to me this is what i pictured it to be <laughs> like <laughs> no oh we should like... by the way i think as i don't know this is gonna run long but like we should definitely go into some other lists because the loudwire list came out oh shit we totally we well, should we not, got a it, also the revolver a, list came out the revolver list came out and loud well the loudwire isn't ranked which sucks but i looked through it and, and wow, the stereo gum lot, list there's a lot to talk about yeah there's a lot to talk about we a lot to talk about um but yeah, that's is that twenty five? Yeah, that's twenty five, bro. That's, that's our top twenty five. That's where we stopped last year. Well, we have so much more. There's so much more. All right, all right. At this all right, point, at this point, can we start including our pet albums? Yes. I all want right. Aunt Zat in there. I think Aunt I Zat's, want I, I, think I want Veller Tech in there. I don't. I can't get into Dude, the Veller this Veller Tech album is fucking amazing. I can't amazing. get into it. I can't. It's so good, dude. I I can't get into it, man. I it just I I don't get the drive from <laughs> from any of the tracks. I really don't. The hard rock makes me cringe. When fucking the guitarist shouts air guitar in Bratlabrin, I'm like, I don't want to exist. <laughs> like, I, dude it's so fun it kicks it, so much ass it's very competent it's it, it, it's very and like well this done. the thing is like i've listened to the earlier villa dick albums right and none yeah. of them have like the, this album actually gets pretty wacky at points it has some killer experimentation all the tracks are unbelievable like it flows incredibly well they have hook solos and everything in between for days and it's so ama- incre- immaculately made every time i listen to this album it is a joy from start to finish i don't know i don't know i i, I don't think it should be within the top 30 I think it totally should be. All right, All right. fine. Then I'll put Dogleg in the top. I'll put Dogleg at 26 I'm, for you. Then. I'm fine. That's fine. If you want to put Dogleg at 26 and Greg at 27, I'll take it. I will take that trade. I will I will, I will. will take that trade. All right. I'll, we'll on, shake on it. We'll shake talk, on it. 
talk on dog leg a little bit. We haven't heard enough about uh, those those baby boys. The the the, the uh, Detroit uh, people. Detroit people. It's like it's super energetic emo influenced post hardcore with like a math rock tinge. Every song is just perfect. It's like like. This album does not sound like it's made by a bunch of like 22 year olds who have been doing this for a few years. Like every single song just works on so many levels. You got you got uh, just immaculate guitar work in like the stickiest emo melodies you could ever ask for. Like this album I have, I, sounds I, fucking great. It sounds yeah really good. Oh yeah, it sounds exactly like what it should too. Like it's it's like it captures that like mic in a garage level or like like mm. aura, you know, and it's just so fun. Like it's one of those albums I can throw on, and it captures like the feel good, but also fuck off energy that like emo and post hardcore sort of embody for me. Sure. And it, it, it's like just from start to end, it's just a blast, and every song slaps. Mm. Like I, I, I'll, I've had the chorus for Kowalski black backflip stuck in my head all week. It's a good. It's a good album. It's a good album. It's a good album. It's a good album. It's really good. I'm glad. Like, hey, you know, we, for all for all the shit I have to listen to for radio job, like, oh my god, this this was a good one. This was a good one to find. Because mm-hmm. um, it's it's not it's yeah. not just another Phoebe Bridgers clone. <laughs> yes. Or if you. Will. Um. Okay. All right. I can't I'm believe looking- you're getting Greg in there because I literally don't like this album. I love that album. We have to make sacrifices. You also, you did not like spiritual distortion either. What spiritual distortion? Not spiritual distortion. What the fuck is the name of the album? It's the Alcest <laughs> album from last year. Oh Jesus! I literally have the album cover in my spiritual head. instinct. Spiritual instinct. That album just sounded like a little too safe for me. Me, it, it's post metal Alcest. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We wish we could go back, but we can't. Um, All right. Well, in the, in the top thirty, we should probably have like one of the big, really good metal albums. Probably Alms. Why? Because. Well, look, dude, Alms is like you know uh, no, we, I we meant, talk I about. Meant, I meant, I meant, I meant the big. You said big album, and I said why? Why do we need a big? We don't need a big album in the top thirty. Well, I mean, I, depending on who you ask, these are all big albums. Right, but but of like the super commercially viable like metal albums from this year, like pro, like I would of, put of the... Unleash the Archers above Alms. I would too. I enjoy that a lot more. Um, I, mean, I re listened well, to Alms today too, and you know what? It's Deftones. I I, I listened to Alms today, and I, I I heard it, and I was just floored by every track. I was like, wow, this is just great. I mean, all these songs are great. All these albums are great. Let's not forget. That all these albums are wonderful. In fact, the best of the year. And our nitpicks are just that, nitpicks. So, just, yeah, just be aware of that. You know, the fact that... Alright, Dogleg Greg Unleash. Yeah, Dogleg Greg Unleash. Uh, is... Where's, uh... Well, now I'm looking... Now I'm looking at my list. So, we're... So, are we gonna put, like, Firelink in there? Alright, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I like the Firelink album, but I don't think it's that that good. I also trying, think that I'm the to look at your album. Here. What? I think that the Katera album is a, a way better melodic black metal album, but we wouldn't. Fine, all right. You one. put if you get if you get Katera, I'll put Killer Tech. Fine. Bam. I'm ha- I'm happy. Thank Christ, Katera got on there. I'm going first. <laughs> dog leg. Count um, down the walls. Cut you out. All right, bottom ten. Well, <laughs> here we are. I didn't think we'd make it this far so quickly. But, yeah, uh, no, this is all. This is a lot easier than I expected, honestly. Well, it's not easy, but I I get what you all mean. All right, well, so of uh, uh, so C is definitely getting on there. Oh, C needs to be on there. Well, yeah, we, let's put C at thirty one. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that. on my list it's actually at thirty one. <laughs> hey, perfect. That album is just so good. Oh man. Every time I hear fucking the chorus for Ashes, I I, I just I scream. I Say scream. the what? Oh, good album. Good album. I'm going to listen to that later. Good album. 
Um, that's <laughs> Boston's album. based C. Okay, that album is Impermanence. It's their mm-hmm. debut. We saw them live. This is our, this is our baby band, Sam. You gotta understand. <laughs> this is the band that we've grown up with. No, because dead ass though. Like what other, <laughs> what other, what other artists have we like grown with? None. And the 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 answer is none. Because like, I could say like, oh yeah, like I'm I've been a Greg fan since day one. But like, I haven't been a Dillinger Escape Plan fan since 1997. I haven't. But like, see, new band. We saw them before they even dropped a full length. Bam. Now we just gotta see KY KOT or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Ki- wait, Kyoti? Is it Kyoti? I don't remember. I don't remember. Post metal is alive in New England. It's the only. Th- it's the only thing alive up here. It's the only thing alive up here. Um, yeah, that's no, that, that's the um. Oh, yeah, that's great. All right. Oh gosh. So what? What? So oh, for, I, I mean, I'm, you I'm see my list. I'm interested in the xenobiotic pick from you and i understand that album's great but like i did not expect that on your top story at all i mean like i was just looking back at all the albums i've listened to the most this year and xenobiotic just it's so good it's like like i we i know it's 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 kind of funny that we try to position like whatever you're writing about is like the final form of whatever but mm-hmm. this really does feel like the final form of like progressive blackened tech deathcore whatever you want to call it like it's, it's like the- if rings of Su- it's the best Deathcore album. It's my favorite Deathcore album. That's just well, no. Aside from the Contortionist, I think Xenobiotic <laughs> does a very well crafted job at technical Deathcore without too too much laying into the cheese of the genre. Like there's like cheese. dude, this, uh, the clean this vocals are like so good. But yeah, no. Oh, but that song's awesome. No, I I agree. Um, I don't know if it should be that high at thirty two, but oh, that's not high. I mean, look, because like, well, dude, that, that album that, deserves to be. No, but what about the what about the two thrash albums? <laughs> I think we I listen to thrash, kid. Come on, all right, yeah, but we know that those thrash albums they got to go up there, and they they they, they got to be pretty high. I mean, like. I think the auto no- auto noesis album is better than the cryptic shift album, and I think, I think that- the cryptic shift album is a little better. But that's I, well, just because right, I'm a well, prog nerd. No, it's, this is exactly it. You love BT Bam with your heart's content, and that's why you love cryptic shift album. Like, so cryptic shift honestly feels more like Voiv- Voivod meets Rush meets Obscura no, yeah. than <laughs> it's. But it's prog. It's prog. It's that prog thrash angle. Yeah, Where, I'm, whereas I'm, I'm, I think Autumn, I, no SS is just uh, you slam. I don't know SS is right. like yeah, it's what it's like blackened thrash with a lot of sludge and melodic elements. It's it's a it's a weird it's weird, but it's, it's like apparently good. apparently it's updating a very particular sound from late '90s Canada scene. I had no idea. Now I know. Yeah, um, right. I mean, look, dude. I, personally, personally. I think Xenobiotic is a better album for me than those. Really? All right, I'll like, raise you. Dude, it's just so it's just so cathartic, and like, it's one of those few albums that has like ninety five percent harsh vocals where I can you know discern the melody and like re, I could sing those songs like, mm. da, da, like not that I know any of the lyrics, but mm. and I think that says something. And the songs are just really well well made. It sounds awesome. Awesome artwork. As a concept, it's cool. I don't know. It pokes all like all right, the wait, prog. Wait. Nerd. What about an autumn for crippled children? I know it's low on your list. In fact, the last on your list. But I want to try and make a case. Look, I think that album's amazing. I'll, I'll bump it up to like thirty-two. I do, I do think Z- I do like Xenobiotic more than that though. What are you? I don't know, man. Xenobiotic is not on my list. That is, of course, more Drake uh, from this year. But no, I don't. All don't right, fine. Autumn for Crippled Children, because we both love that album, followed by Xenobiotic. Yeah, but I want to say one thing first. Right. Neptunian times, Maximalism you... is no, number two, on. okay, on the list. Uh, <laughs> Replace many... Ulcerate with Neptunian Maximalism. How many times have you listened to the Golden Ashes album? All right, well, here, all right. A, you're wrong. B, 
I think it's an autumn for crippled children, but more to our liking. Because it's just harsh. It, it's the harsh version of an autumn. Well, for I mean, autumn for crippled Literally, children. I think it's awesome. I can play no, that I on agree. my like draft. But it's 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 the same, just literal wall of noise sentiment, except flipped into Satan. I feel like that album, <laughs> the like like that album will be your angle, and Golden Ashes will be your devil. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that there. I think they're two peas in a very tightly knit pod. Plus, Maurice de Jong is just a goat. I don't know. I think you should listen to that album. I think... Uh, look, I think I'll probably enjoy that... it. There's just so I... much shit. I know. I know. Alright. Autumn for Crippled Children, 32. Alright, alright. Well, let's look at the where we where we align, because then we, we can put the albums we both have on the list of these slots now. Like, we, I see we both have Stygian Bow, Cryptic Shift, and well, Firelight. Okay. Hold on there. Hold on there about Stygian Bow. I listened to it today. I didn't get that much out of it. I want more Funeral Doom. I want more Funeral Doom. Really, dude? I, I think this album is awesome. Like, this I is want... an album I, could, I can play for most people, and they'll just cry. Like, Well, yeah. I, I think... I cried the first time I heard it. But... I don't know, man. I, I feel like... I don't feel like the Mogridge... Full Mogridge... I don't know if they should have gone full Mogridge. They went full Mogridge, and I don't know if it <laughs> um, Never go I, full Mogridge. I, I, think, I think it's a little too... Just just barely. Just a little too um, light. A little too safe. All right. Want to put Firelink next? Because I love that album. I'll... Uh, I'll... Put Firelink. I'll put Firelink. <laughs> Adam's Link. never played Dark Souls and it shows. No, I, I I listened to this album today too. It's great. Um, I'll put Firelink as long as Glorious Depravity follows it. Yeah, all right. Glorious Depravity would be on my list. It's just like yeah, it I've just listened to it like I ten it, times. It, it. And... Yeah. Alright, Firelink. Honestly, Glorious. like I know I said it as a meme, but like, why isn't Neptunian maximalism our number one? I, I think it's all right. I think that album is too. It's hard to get through, and I don't mean that in a bad way, because it is a hard album. But like sitting there, Adam just doesn't like Zool, and it shows. No, I I think the album's great, but I I've I've only listened to it like twice because. You know, it's as monolithic as fucking Wanderers and Imbaldar, except with with less that, <laughs> with less that I'm consciously aware of. There's just so much going on, so many different bullshit jazz things happening, like a billion instruments. I think it's great, and it should Drone. probably be on this list. It, it, it should be on this list, but I, I can't I can't give you a reason as to why it's not higher. No, I mean I totally get that. I feel like if if I was if I was really big brained enough, this album would be my best best album of the year. But yeah. like it's just so like I I've listened to a lot of Zorn, and this album is way harder to get into than any Zorn. <laughs> it's super. It's impenetrable. It's yeah. It's a th- it's a three. It's a triple album, three discs, all concept. Half of it's improv, full metal and jazz instrumentation, drone elements, black metal elements, psych elements. It's just so much. It's a lot. I feel like, don't get me wrong, though, if we were truly Ascendant, this would be, this would be like in our top three. Probably. Um, but we are running a metal blog here. We're not running it. Well, we're it's not, a metal we're not, we're not just, it's just noise yet. Um, <laughs> That's it. Crossover one. Dude, I want, where's, where is Ant Zat? Where Dude, is Ant I don't, Zat? I, this all. <laughs> All right, fine. You got ants out. What do I get from my list on here? I think we should probably have ohms or like even. F- I know you're gonna right. hate me for this. You're gonna oh. hate me for this. Code orange. Ohms. Ohms. I'll take ohms over code orange. All right. I, well, I think, I think co- the code right. orange. I think code orange is good. I think underneath is a good album, but I don't think it's a great album. I don't think. I don't think it's a top forty album worthy. I en- I enjoy underneath more than forever by a long shot. Oh no, me too. Me yeah, me too. Didn't you put forever on your 2017 list? 
Yeah, but I was a baby then. I also put septic flush on my 2017 list. Oh gosh, you got it. One day we gotta just go through. We gotta look at your 2017 list. I've done it, dude. I've done it. It's it's bad. It's it's horrible to look at. Um, all right, so so all right, we agree. Alms is the next pick, and what and you want to answer? Well, actually, all right, so I threw, I threw, I I I, I took a I took a an executive liberty. Okay, all I right. Threw, well, I, I feel like I feel like Firelink level. should be higher than Ansat because we both have it on. No, it I is. F- it is. Oh, where's Firelink? Oh I gosh, got, I'm sorry. I just I, I yes, yeah. I see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's all cool. right. Neptune Maximalism. Ansat. Alms. And we we only have two left. We have three left all right so i said you bow should be there man ah ah i want it's on both want, of our lists all right i want null on there and i think that the null album is better than the said bow by a lot you probably have never listened to it or listened to it once i think it's better but I think it's probably better too. Okay, null fine. Null can be on there. We have two left. Probably one of the thrash albums, and then that's Entity by Null, by the way, and they stylize as zero. But we'll go. Through oh wait! It again. I, oh wait! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I was being dumb. Uh, here. So hear hear me out. Why we we should put Einsoft there instead? <laughs> oh, oh! Wait, no. Einsoft needs to go higher. Einsoft needs to go way higher. Einsoft Dude, Einsoft go... is like literally like thirty on your list. Yeah, but okay, but it needs to go higher than. All right, I'll fine. Put uh... I'll put I- I'll put Einsoft over Katera. I'll just shift the whole thing down, throw Einsoft in there because l- l- that album is just that album is. Ooh, that that album is a nice a nice. A nice hybrid metal punk. I don't know, Adam. Dude, you, you got you got. I don't know. I'm just looking at. I'm just looking at the, the numbers twenty five right, 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 through right. thirty. You know what? You know what? You know what? You, we you have what? not one, but two, or we have three Adam picks here right now. Crypt- if you cryptic- want to swap one of them cryptic- with Einsoft, no. no. What? No. Cryptic. All right. Here, here. Laying down the law. Einsoft goes in that position. Then we get cryptic shift and Bellwitch. Yeah, I agree. Bellwitch rounding out our list is a nice, doomy, folky path. Well, it's actually Bellwitch Aerial Ruin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I think we're done. I mean, unless you see anything else on the list that absolutely needs to. I mean, I'm at least so far. I I think I'm happy. Uh, I, I don't know. I have I have reservations about a few albums, but like what? Why well, I, I have reservations I... about Palimpsest at number two or at number three. So, <laughs> what if we make it number two though? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I I refuse. <laughs> I, refuse. I don't know. I have reservations I about Mama Leak that high. Oh, um, no, fair that high. This is so good. I I. I'd be move. I'd be willing to move on fair, maybe, but I will not move on Mamalik. Mamalik is Mamalik is cemented, dude. All right, of the albums currently lower than fair, Jeez, I feel like. I mean, I know we're memeing about it, but like, shouldn't Neptunian Maximalism be in our top twenty-five if it's that good? Um, I mean, yeah. If you want to just move it down, go. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like kind of a cop out, but like, mark my no, words, I'll like, listen to this album like four times in a row, and no, I'll just it, be like, okay, music's been solved. No, it's it, it's true though, because yeah, I mean, like, what, what I'm trying to think about what our thing from last year looked like. I'm like I'm our 25 right. last year was Blood Incantation. And we, that was like our consensus. Okay, this album is phenomenal. We just don't like death metal, so it's at the bottom pick. <laughs> That's true. There's like no death metal here, which is fine. Um, but... It's almost like we don't listen to death metal. Hey, we have a death. Wait, metal did I did I not get one. did I not get Xenobiotic on this list, dude? No, you not. Okay, I'm uh, Xenobiotic deserves to be in here somewhere. Put it at number 40. It's better than the Bellwitch record. I agree it is better than Bellwitch record. 
Actually, and uh, since these are sort of my picks, swap uh, Xenobiotic with Cryptic Shift. Not that I, I actually think Cryptic Shift is the better record, like, if we're speaking from that objective hipster taste, but I definitely enjoy Xenobiotic more. Fair. Well, I think that's it. I think we somehow managed to fit it in a one hour and 40 minute package. But That's honestly kind of impressive. It. All right. We're going to go through our temporary list. Now, remember, Sam's going to listen to Katera, and he's going to go listen to Golden Ashes, and we're going to reassess. Well, also, we're, we're both going to listen to Neptunian Maximalism like eight both, times in a row yes, until awesome. it hits the number one spot right behind yeah. Palimpsest mm -hmm. at number right. zero. So, currently, you're hearing it here first, folks. You're not getting this on the... Uh, you're not getting the text form of this just yet. So only our dedicated podcast listeners get this list right now. We got 20 or number 40. Cryptic Shift. Visions from Enceladus. I think that's how you say it. Xenobiotic. More Drake. More Drake. Deftones. Ohms. And that. Uh crap, I I forget all of it. It's uh, an, <laughs> And they will know us by the trail for of the you death. men for you men who gaze into the sun. Um thirty six. Glorious depravity. Um I think it's is it, is it ocean <laughs> is it ocean of scabs? It's like oceans of scabs, I believe. Wait. No, uh, sorry, it's ageless violence. That was the single. Azel's Violence. 35 Firelink. With Firelink. <laughs> Alright, you, 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 the the the, you can do the next you can do the next five, Sam. Alright. An uh, 35, an autumn for or 34, an autumn for crippled children with all fell silent. Everything went quiet. Mm. 33 C with impermanence. 32 Gvillertech with Splid. 31, Kataria with the acoustic album. No, and it's not the acoustic album. With the non-acoustic album. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. Toda Historia Pelafrente. It's the easy one. There's no accent. It's all phonetic. Anyway. Uh, I, and 30 was Einsoft with Home. No, that's Omega, Omega V. Jesus. Omega, Omega v. v. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Unleash the Archers. Abyss, number 29. Greg Pucciato, number 28. Child Soldier. Creator of God. 27, Dogleg, Melee. 26, Fairer, Monad. 25, I don't know that's you. 25, Neptunian Maximalism with Aeons. 24, no, that's 20, is that 25 or 24? Sorry, 24, Gulch with Impenetrable Cerebral Fortress. 23, Puron with Abscess Time. Twenty-two. Have a crew with. Let me let me whip out the title of this album it's and try not to butcher. It's like it. Unios. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, it's Unios Siomain Sota. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty-one. Caligula's horse with rise radiant. Whoa. Number twenty. Louis Starrs with Bloem. Esoc Trillium with Eternity of Shaog. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen. Fawn Limbs, Sleeper Vessels. 17, Wobbler, Dwellers of the Deep. And 16 is Emma Ruth Rundle and Thou collaboratively on May Our Chambers Be Full. May they be full. May they. Um, number 14 is Primitive Man with Immersion. 14, uh, oh gosh, was that, sorry, that was 15, <laughs> Primitive Man Immersion. 14, uh, th this is just really messing me up. 14 is clipping with visions of bodies being burned. 13 is Svalbard with, um, when I die, will I get better? Sam, I hope not. Uh, don't die, please. <laughs> Studio K. Okay. 12 is Imperial Triumphant with Alphaville. And 11 is Serpent Column with Cathedos. Number 10, Vile Creature. With glory, glory, apathy took helm. By the way, funniest fucking thing in the world, funniest music moment is when they tell you to flip the record over on streaming services. That, that's hysterical. <laughs> During the second song of this album. 
Number nine, Mama Leek with Come and See. Number eight, <laughs> Ouch Slot. You said Come. Yeah. Take a Chance on Rock and Roll. Number seven, Haken. Virus. Very aptly named album for the year. Still think that's funny. <laughs> um, and number six, The Microphones with Microphones in 2020. Um... All right, top five. Number five is Aranzi Pazuzu with Maestarin Kinzi. Number four is Paysage Diver with Involved. Number three is Protest the Hero with Palimpsest. Number two is Mare Cognitum and Spectral Lore with Wanderers, Astrology of the Nine. And our number one album of the year are Ulcerate with Stare into Death and Be Still. Aranzi Pazuzu should be above Paysage Diver. I the list is done. So. It's been created. Where you have? Well, actually, I have a. <laughs> you're gonna hate me for this. I feel like Loth should be on this list. We Loth? both like that Loth. We both really like Shut that Loth album. When did you start liking this Loth album? Dude, I'm like, look, I've had. I no, like this Loth. Don't album. even pull. No, don't pull this shit. Because you were like, oh, it's okay. The song, <laughs> the clean songs aren't that good. And I was no, like, it was, it's the heavy songs that aren't that good. Look, this album's great on me a lot. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is why... Okay. <laughs> this, this is, is not... Can't have nice... This, this is well, not the final list. We have time... And we also have honorable mentions. We will have honorable mentions for this. We're not going to put those out, I don't... I mean, I noticed you don't have Loth on your list, I'm just saying. I did not have Loth on my list. You're right. I, I just know not. you like that album a lot. I do like that album a lot. Um... This is something that we'll need to go back and reassess. You know, it's also not on this list. Sumac. Oh, jeez. I... Well, oh, all right. God. Well, the, 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 but my argument there is that Monad and Null take that place. Because I do think that the Sumac, as you know, in my review, they didn't change Did you actually post enough. that? Yeah, I posted that. They nice. didn't change enough from the... From Love and Shadow. Um... They had a weird transition. It got somewhat less heavy with the lack of free improv. And where the free improv is there, it's great. But I think that they t- they, they took a step back, and I think they should have obviously taken a step forward. All right. Uh, I, I think, you but, know, before we ship this list, even though we just read the whole thing, <laughs> sure. we, before we hard ship it, I'm just going to engage in some whataboutisms. Well, uh, well, like, well, like I said, like I said, this is not hard ship. This isn't hard shipped until we post the formal post on our blog. All right. Well, I want to. I want to end be the discussion. Cha- there may be changes. At least for the albums I've listened to a lot. Sure. So I'm going to ask you about some albums. See how you feel about them. Uh huh. So big one. I think this album, honestly, top five material. I can't believe you missed it. Ultra Mono by Idols. No, oh, fuck off. <laughs> fuck you. Know. That was big. Um, the other, uh, like, I don't know. I could make I could make arguments for a lot, though. Like, there's a ton here. Like, that Snorlax album, I still fucking love. MSW's album. Them. MSW's album. Crushing. Girl, honorary astronaut. I, and I haven't listened to it yet, but I don't know. There's a lot. Like, we didn't put we didn't put no on here. And I saw you have that on your list, but we didn't put it on. Yeah, no's phenomenal. It's so good. It just scraped off for me. I I, I put it I put it just just on. It's so my no mention. monument by Molecat Doma. <laughs> Molecat Doma, per, it's everywhere. It's <laughs> everything. Okay, <laughs> we don't need to talk about the Doma. If you like, yeah, no if you like, you like the Doma by Atramentus. I'm, that's one. That one's a little surprising. <sighs> no, dude, I wasn't. I wasn't too too crazy about that one. The internet went crazy. I did not go crazy though. I did. did internet, I, internet went bananas. Yeah, I, I, I wrote a review about that. Looking at you viewers at home. And, yeah, it was, I mean, it's good. But, like, those songs really drag. And you can't have dragging songs in Funeral Doom. <laughs> but that's the whole genre. Yeah, but you'd say that's the whole genre. But, like, I don't know, man. I'll listen to Bell Witch and I'll listen to Mournful Congregation. All right, I have two more. These are actually three more. These are kind of all real. Sure. I disagree, though. Yeah. I mean, great album, but 
if anyone other than Poppy made it, like, say some random band that was like, um, I don't know, Cheese Whiz came out and made I Disagree, I don't think I'd be nearly as impressed. Like, it's a good new metal out, al- like, it's a good electronic alt metal album, but I think that's it. I think I think most of the sheen from I Disagree comes from it being Poppy and the surprise factor of her just sort of being able to do that. I don't just doesn't like women, clearly. I love that. No, I love that album. I've played, I've played I Disagree on my radio show literally countless times. All right, I just wanted to hear the argument because I know what, we were like that. Kashiwa Natoni Doishima-san. Okay, dude. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Dude, let it all Japanese. burn down. Burn it to the ground. Burn it to the ground. Be safe and sound. Um, the other one that I didn't put on this list, I actually took off, is the Panzerfest <sighs> album. Yeah, dude, no Panzerfest. Because, I gotta say, first track and third track, they're good. They're not that good, though. But, I will be talking about Panzerfaust on our next week's topic, which is the best songs of 2020. Dun dun dun! Um, because I think that that album has quite a few amazing tracks from it, um, as well as a lot of the albums here that we'll be talking about. I have like, yeah, I have like three more I gotta ask about. Uh, Endless Wound, Black Curse. Um, um, it could, if we were to go to 50, it could be in that 50. It could be in the 40 to 50. Great album. Um, but I I think I like I think I like every album that we put on here more. And nothing Omen's against that album Elder. because it's great. No. Okay. No, I don't think so. I don't think I, I, I like that album quite a bit. I, I, I mean, I like it. I like I like it too. I actually forgot about it until you met, <laughs> until you just mentioned it, um, and I don't think that's a good sign. Our final final one. I really think I can make an argument for the Vow covers album for Nirvana. That album is amazing, front to back. I agree. I agree. But what about the Black Sabbath cover album that they put out? Oh my god, dude. I didn't even get Psychonaut on this list. Fuck your Psychonaut. See, we don't even <laughs> need it. <laughs> Bro. All right. I, I, at least I know my honorable mentions. Yeah. Bingo. See, that's what I, see, I mean, that's what I've gotten from this, too. Also, like, I no, no, no. I know it's a meme, but I literally I think we could make an argument for Tree of Clues at like forty. <laughs> Put Tree of Clues in your fucking in your no, dude. Mentions. The thing is, the thing is, I don't like, like I don't like the re- I don't like half the songs, man. I don't like half the remixes. Well, hear me out. the The original songs are so good that the remixes are just okay. gr- good. By no, well. I no, you cannot make. That's a bad argument. I do not stand that argument. I don't know, dude. I still sla- I still go hard as fuck to some of those covers, remix things. I think some of them. Are, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. Think I that, was trying I don't think that, to find a I don't way think to. <laughs> the hundred gex sheen is fully matched on that record. I don't right, think, I don't sh- think the, the magic. Want to shit on some? Uh, want to shit on? What do you mean the magic's gone? Shut up! Their next album is going to be ten out of ten. It's going to be Anthony Fantano's six ten. Okay. All right, all right, sir. Um, yeah. Let's shit on some other lists now that we're here. So I've got the Loudwire. Want to send it in chat? Pull up. Like I said, it's not a comp- It's not a comprehensive list. It's date. It's by date. Um, oh really? But I, oh, the I, seventy Jesus. Yeah, right. Weird. Um, there's a lot. Um, there's All a right, few... Sons of Apollo should not be there. Obviously. Mm-hmm. What uh, the heck is Midnight? Uh, it's Black and Speed Metal. They're huge. They're I don't huge. even know Sep- Sepultura or STP dropped albums. If that says anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they put. One also, up. why Ozzy? Because it's Ozzy. <laughs> also, why Five Finger Death Punch? <laughs> yep. Who this, the hell are Nova is, Twins? This album's bad, and there's like Pearl Jam's new album is on there. I didn't even know they had a new album. I didn't either. Per- oh gosh, August there it is. Red? Igor? In this moment, hey, we talked about that. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, Nightwish. gosh. Honestly, we can probably you. do a top 10 disappointment. Or we can just do a disappointments of 2020 and Igor will be on there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wake up, son. All time low? What? I thought this was a medalist. <laughs> Nightwish? What? Metal. Nightwish it's dropped an album this metal. year? It's Jesus rock and Christ. metal, Sam. Because the Haley the Haley Williams uh, solo album's on this one, too. That one's actually that album's actually really good. The Not that one. I listen to that music, but yes, it is really good. Well, shit. We should probably have Black Dahlia Murder, but like we just don't. No, I I don't I don't think so. I think I think it's a good. I think Verminous is another good album, but I don't think it's anything spectacular. Not, Ghost not better Inside? than Trivium. Jesus, dude. Ghost Inside, Sam. Oh gosh, dude, um, this hurts. Seether. John oh Trinchy. my. Project X? Oh, Jesus, dude. I'm literally going to puke. Sam, the Machine Gun Kelly album is on this list. All right. Uh, <laughs> Dead ass. Kelly album's actually okay. Well, I mean, you yeah, listen but... to it and, and it's not good. Oh, but you know God. what? you know what's also on there? What? Corey motherfucking Taylor. That's it, dude. We're doing a Corey motherfucking Taylor parody <laughs> review where we're just talking chud voices the whole time. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh, so is the ACDC album, and the and the Smashing Pumpkins album, the just and the Maryland. Out. This is literally every boomer band that released a like disappointing album this year. Like Manson's albums here, albums shit. Mm-hmm. Alpha, oh gosh, dude, this list is just not good. <laughs> it's it's not it's so not good. It even has Greg Pusciato on it. What the heck, dude? What the heck? Oh my god! Oh yeah, have you uh? Have you uh, heard the new Tala album? Excuse me. Um, apparently it's good. I just, it's, you know, uh, you know that dude, hung, Hungry Lights on YouTube, that has the really uh popular like how to metal scream video. Yeah. Okay, that's his band. It's like, oh. it's like everything hardcore. Hmm. And the new album's a con. Uh, their album's a concept album. They actually performed the whole thing live on on like a YouTube live stream. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. I I don't know if we'd like it because it's probably not our stuff, but you know. Yeah. Um, I am planning on jumping over to the revolver list too. Okay, but I let just... me just let me just yell if there are any really bad ones. I still <laughs> haven't listened to the Poos for list. If that says anything, it's fine. Um, the new. I also just I'm seeing this in a revolver. Um, below, the front man picked his favorite album of 2020, of Ooh. which there are. In Kill- there okay, are... have you listened to Killer Be Killed? No, but I don't want to because I don't think it'll be good. It probably won't. All right, I didn't sh- like their sh- first sh- album. Shoot me the shoot the re- me the revolver one, and then I'm trying I'm trying to find it. I just I found the metal injection thing talking about. I don't think the article itself is out. For what metal injection? No, um, the revolver, the revolver article. Are you sure? Right there, I sent it. No, well, oh, there it is. Hey, Alphaville. Alphaville. Touche, amore. Here, Poppy goes slowcore on new EP, dude. I love Poppy. Anyway. <laughs> Poppy goes slow <laughs> That's that's a fucking headline. That's a headline on Revolver. Ooh, Mrs. Um, Piss is there. That's based. I got I gotta admit the the Miss Piss that's a base take. I agree. Um yeah. Why that's Lamb of God? Is that album even listenable, dude? No, dude. Why neither is the Manson album. Okay, dude. Higher power needs more love. I've never listened to it. Anti icon, I clearly clearly revolver knows what's up. Adam just hates Ghost Man. This is a weird list, man. This is a weird this is such a weird list because there's so much there's so much rap on this album, on this list. You would not expect it. Like what? Like run the Oh run the jewels. Wait, what? (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Run the jewels, anti icon, body count. Like, why? I I don't know. Just cause <laughs> you want you don't. I don't. You're not foaming at the mouth because Greg Fusciato is number three. <laughs> I oh, believe me, I already foamed. Gosh. I I don't know. I also think honestly, that- I feel like for Revolver's scope, I feel like Ohms at number one is like a fine choice. 
It's fine. It's criminal to me, but whatever. Look, that album's great. No, yeah. We literally did a podcast on how it's great. <laughs> That's true, we did. Now you're drowning in it. All right. Is it news time? Because I have some ha- pretty oh, saucy... I have some we should, saucy oh, we news. should at least... We should... Uh, yeah, no, there are some funny news stories this week. We should talk about the Stereo Gum list just briefly. Oh, I, I, I completely forgot. Absolutely, we should. That it, that list is hecking wild, Jimbo. Now, now this is this is just the the base stereo gum list. We will will I'm sure we'll also talk about the black market list when that comes out. Yeah, I think they're the first like major online publication to drop their best of year list, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, certainly. And uh, um, yeah, this is a like this this list is like half of exactly what you'd think stereo gum would pick, and then like there are just curveballs on there. Oh yeah, like. I don't know. I mean, even like, I feel like, even still, like, Gulch and Couch Slaughter. I think that those are, those are throat. Those are weird for me. I would not expect those on here. Maybe Gulch, but not Couch Slot. Yeah, right. No, but and and even some like a uh, the uh, like underground picks. Like they have the Ka album on here. Mm-hmm. And they have... that um. I mean, the Hum album's pretty far up there. Yeah, that Hum album's like number 11. Yeah, they're just, it's a, this is an interesting list. I mean, and the Haim, likes... hey, and Haim is on number fucking four. Yep. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, Lamelda's kind of surprising, because like, I, I don't know, I've been I've been following the modern and DC scene pretty closely. I haven't seen that too too mm. much, seen too much love. Uh, but this, this is pretty like typical stereo gum list. Like we we knew that fetch the bolt cutters was gonna be there at number one. <laughs> it's the metal placement that's always interesting. I remember their 2016 list, the album, the list that made me discover Cobalt. They had mm. Slow Forever as the highest metal album at like number 22 or something. Yeah. In this list, Good year. they actually they have no extreme metal. They have, um, they have Hum at 11, Hum Inlet. And then they have like Couch Slut lower, and Ruth Rundle lower, and then Gulch at like thirty. Yeah, it's weird. They're skimping on us. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was surprised right. no Deftones, but I mean, not that it really matters. It is what it is. But yeah, uh, ever since Stephen Carpenter was like, <laughs> "Flat Earth COVID ain't real." Literally. All right, there's some tea, dude. Dude, hit me up. Hit me with this tea. I'll be. I'll, I'll I'll open up metal injection right now to see if I nails. I see any. It's not, yeah, dude, nails base. Oh my hell? god! Both, both, dude. What the hell happened to nails? What what went wrong? Well, They're dude, not, Todd it's not Jones. Even a sort of, geez, that yeah, that that is bizarre. So, to clarify for the listener at home, uh. Amazing hardcore and power violence and grindcore group, Nails, that everyone loves and knows, is basically done now because the drummer and bassist... Dude, they got vectored. Yeah. And like, I don't know, man. What's gonna happen? No... Okay, honestly, honestly, this this is speculation, but Todd Jones has sort of has a reputation for just being a dick to work with. Yeah, like, kind of being an overall asshole. He probably did something, like, big, like, similar to, like, the Vector situation. And rather than make a big fuss of it, both band members are just quitting. Fair. That, or, like, it could do with have to do with COVID, too. Because I know Nails have been in the studio since the start of COVID. Hmm. My gosh, it, that, that is, that's interesting. Man, I, that's... I guarantee in, like, a year we'll find out this dude did something heinous. Oh, of course. I mean... He, I don't know. He he sort of has a reputation of being like a tough guy, asshole, and and notoriously rough to work with. I and mean, he, look, he just sort of has the look, you know, like the Phil and Zelmo look. Yeah, look, man, Vector's back. That's all I'm saying. New album. <laughs> it's the thing. The thing that's funny is probably gonna be great. <laughs> I will be great. And you know what? I also saw. Wait, what did I? See? What did I see today? Shit. I I saw someone was in the studio today. They were finishing up. Who the fuck was it? I was on I was on Facebook and someone that just Leprous? No, not Leprous. It was Alright, now you're fine. 
Regardless, right, I'll fill time by talking about Slipknot's new limited edi- edition whiskey, Clowns oh, Iowa Shine, which won an award or something. And you can get the box set for $150 or Jesus Christ, really? uh, $30, $40 for a small bottle and $70 or $80 for a large bottle. White Ward, their drums are done. <laughs> Inhales sharply. No, yeah, exactly. Bingo. Oh, my um, God. You just got me hyped, dude. Yeah, dude. New White Ward in 2021. That's all I'm saying. Ugh. What'll be our number A one bad next didn't year? See. I'll tell you what. Um, it'll probably be Palimpsest. No, dude. Um, it'll be Passing Light a Day. We're going to have to pick Passing Light a Day. James Labrie. I don't know if you saw this. Very briefly mm-hmm. sung part of Pull Me Under a cappella. And it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh gosh, I don't want to see it. I'll sh- I'll send. Okay, it to dude, Hal Slinger looks so cool. I'll s- oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. I watched the Black Crown Initiate guy do his vocals for it, and I was like, oh man, dude, I'm getting this game as soon as it comes out. Like, I don't even care if it's just Trivium Worship the entire game. I don't care. I think it'll be fun. I th- oh, gosh, that 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 picture of James Lebrie like with his mouth half open is very unfortunate. Just uh, do watch it. Skip to like a minute into the video because he has a talk back before and just I don't know, man. It's hysterical. Because all right, all right. It's a it, it is as bad as you think it would be. <laughs> oh, it's on cameo, dude. Yeah, someone paid him to do this. I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude! Stop. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Gosh, James Reese. Yeah. Apparently, there's another like Metal Bay game coming out on PS5 where it's like what Crypt game? of the Necro Dancer. <laughs> Message me about it, actually. What game? What's it called? You're gonna I'm have to intrigued. bleep out the name I just said, by the way. Uh, oh no, it is Hellslinger. It is Hellslinger. Yeah, it's like Crypt of the Necrodancer plus Doom. Yeah, no, it looks great. I'm very excited. They got yeah, uh, uh, fucking Matt Heafy has done stuff with it. Um, Black Card Initiate guy. Alicia White Glutes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of stuff, dude. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. Be, like, that's like one of those things where, like, I could, like, like you said, I could give less of a shit. <laughs> how good the game is but i'll play yeah, it because yeah. you know I, I don't know I, as a metal fan we have our oppression complex that we have to yeah. thrive. like i just mm-hmm. i think it ties in like i just bought the new magic the gathering metal themed card editions for a few of them called the secret <laughs> layer and it's like 40 bucks and it's just five alternate metal themed card arts and i was like oh bye mm. i mean hey plus a rhythm fps sounds cool as shit so i, I just hope i just this is kind of interesting, because this could be a podcast topic, but, like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of potential with that game, and I think that the moment that they're able to incorporate, I don't know. I don't know if this is already a feature, but, like, if they could procedurally generate, like, whatever levels or however the hell they do it. Dude, with Spotify, music, Raft, Spotify Raft oh. is out. Spotify Raft? Yeah, Spotify Raft. Oh gosh. Okay, we gotta do, we gotta react to this live. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, all right. How do I how do I get my rap? I forget. I, I it's like something dumb. I know. You, for, so first you Google Spotify rap. Oh yeah, it's all in the mobile app. Oh. Oh no, I'm I'm well, seeing it on my desktop. As long as you go into uh. Oh, it's yeah, on the desktop, you, too? It, you gotta go to the website, though. Wow. Right, I'll react to my Spotify rap right here. Dude, you're gonna have, like, 200,000 more songs than me played. It's just all gonna be Palimpsest. <laughs> oh, no. It's gonna be... Dude, for me, it's literally gonna be 100 decks, and that's it. I'm actually... I'm scared. Oh, I can't do this, dude. I, I don't remember dude, my I, Spotify login. It's fine, I'll do it on my... I'll do it on my phone. Gosh. How do I do it on, do it on my phone? You, just, uh, you, can, uh, you can just uh, Google it on your phone, too. Oh. Right, right. Well, now that we're stalling, 
Um, well, now that we're stalling, I'll, I'll talk about some some dumb. Uh, these are the top twenty. F- uh, Brazilian band The Damnation brings life to thra- to old school thrash for the Parasite music me. video. I don't know. The, the, I, what other news stories did you have while we get Spotify Raft working? Um, Spotify donated five hundred thousand dollars to uh, the NIVA, which is the independent venue association which is basically Wait, how at- much five hundred thousand five hundred thousand jesus christ dude that's like that's literally a pittance no serious like fucking the spotify ceo's net worth is 4.5 billion that's oh a- no dude oh no <laughs> what? i opened up i opened up to from the sky <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> protest the hero yeah that sounds about right um but hey you know what the niva has like all the venues that we've been to and love so good for spotify a little bit but like come on guys really 500 grand that's all you can afford adam dude i listened to 305 genres this year 305 yeah. Do that, do that many exist? No, it was a joke. Dude, I hate Spotify genre tags. My top genres were post doom metal, void gaze, alternative <laughs> metal. What the fuck is void gaze? Yeah, literally. My top song of the year was Haken's Prosthetic. Oh my god, I'm a normie. What is. What is. What's post doom metal? Exactly, dude. I don't know. No, post doom metal is literally like I think I have a, I have like a long Twitter thread about this, but post doom metal is literally anything that's come out in the past like ten years. It is in fact beyond doom metal, dude. I can't get my Spotify password, and I'm trying. Dude, you to don't do have Spotify on your phone, bro. I do, but it, it won't. It's not. I can't get it from my browser. It has to make me sign in. Dude. All right, we're tr- we're yeah. trying. We're tr- we're literally trying our All right, well, hardest. You want, you want to react to my top songs of the year? Absolutely. I'll, oh, I found. I already got mine. Never mind. We're back. Prosthetic, the glow part two, the tempest, ill met season, and stupid horse. We got the tempest. <laughs> a, quick, a quick one before the eternal worm devours Connecticut. Waiting for black metal records to come in the mail. Slow violence. Is it really you by loathe? That's my top five. Yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised at all. My missed hits? Ooh. We got on missed hits. Unmissed hits. I've Dude, literally... I'm a pioneer. I've listened to Tyveen Porty before it hit fifty thousand streams. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> when everything I have saved that isn't like major albums have uh, compared to other listeners, which decade did I play the most? Two thousands, right? Yep. Gosh, dude, this is this is like one of those things where like capitalism sucks and Spotify sucks, but for some reason it makes you feel good. Wait, I'm trying to get it on the on the app. Where can I I'm confused. Why, are you in the browser? No, so I went on the browser on my computer, and it said you have to download the app to see it. Dude, Adam, I'm an incel. Guess my top artist this year. Uh, dude, 100 Gex. Guess again. In uh, Neutral Milk Hotel. The microphones. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, dude, I'm literally a meme. My top artists are the microphones. <laughs> Caro Caro Benito, <laughs> have a nice life. <laughs> One hundred Gex and Haken. You fool! You absolute imbecile! You've done it this time. <laughs> no, dude, this is so embarrassing. Eh, it is what it is. All right, I'm trying to find this fucking thing. I'm restarting my phone. I w- I just want to do Spotify rap, but you know what? That's okay. Because we'll be back next week with another cool episode. Are we doing best songs next week? Uh, Yeah, dude. We're doing best songs. All right. I'm good with that.
Um, okay. I mean, I guess we can end it there. We don't really have much else to talk about other than our Spotify rap. Dude, the Spotify rap is everything, though. It's true. Oh, gosh, I hate myself, dude. Bad Bunny is the most streamed artist of 2020. Really? I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. I am. The most played song of 2020? Blinding Lights. That song's wow. pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Not Grammy Award winning, though. <laughs> what do you Yikes. mean? Yikes. Yikes. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, no, I, I guess we can... Uh, I guess we can end it here. Do you have anything else you'd like to talk about there, there Sam? Not, nothing, like, super pressing. I don't know. Spotify Raft is like the most exciting time of the year, though. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Come back next week. Unfortunately, our outro data was corrupted on our original podcast files. So this is Adam editing in post production just to say we have been Sam and Adam on the PM Metal Guide podcast talking about the Thunderdome and our favorite albums of 2020 don't forget to jump onto spotify anchor apple music and all other streaming services to listen to all of our upcoming episodes in the future 